All right, welcome everyone. Good to see some usual faces on here. Good to see you, Rakesh. Got Chelsea on. Welcome, you guys. We're going to have a huge audience today, so I'm really excited. And the great Eric Michael Clark joining us. All right, Eric, you're going to be a panelist. Got, uh, I believe, six amazing panelists today, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. All right, guys, so as everyone starts joining, um, uh, we are uh, um, going to be launching here in about uh, seven minutes. Um, but I uh, would love to um, hear any of your initial questions, if you guys have any burning questions about fashion photography, um, about uh, you know, how to make it in the fashion industry, how to book a huge fashion editorial, how to shoot a fashion campaign, um, and kind of what it takes. Um, so please go ahead and direct all of that to um, the uh, Q&A section. Um, and the Q&A section is gonna be on your bottom panel. Feel free to ask as many questions um, as you can. And um, we'd love to get to them. Um, we usually answer every single question by the end of a, a webinar. So, um, and make sure also to, uh, to stay on the whole time because we've got a lot of really fantastic stuff we're gonna be going over today. And I wanna make sure you guys do not miss a thing. So um, I, uh, I've got a lot of uh, amazing secrets we're gonna reveal about fashion photography. And um, I'm excited to, you know, dis work, help you guys discover essentially how to make it in fashion and how to be able to be a successful fashion photographer, because I know a lot of you guys um, uh, would love to be. Um, some of you probably already are, maybe want to adapt and adjust and try to um, take it to the next level. That's what we're all about. And uh, over the last 11 years, we've directed 121 elite photographic workshops, the photography workshop series, and we've been mentoring literally thousands of photographers to do this. So I'm excited you guys get to jump on today and get all this free insight on the secrets of fashion photography. So um, uh, I, I do notice a lot, we've got a lot of um, uh, so, some of the same people that I keep jumping on, which I'm great to see. Gene Belitsky, amazing uh, fashion cinematographer and photographer. I know I've uh, met some of you guys before. The great Ken Sexton, uh, good to see you as well. And um, awesome. All right, guys. So um, I am excited to see, um, uh, you know, any of your guys' questions. So I guess, uh, but, you know, before we begin, before everybody else jumps on, um, we, have a, um, we have a question from the great Rakesh Malik. Uh, and by the way, Rakesh just joined us at our Newport Beach uh, photography workshop three weeks ago. Uh, it was live in Newport Beach. We shot with um, massive scale production. It was about a $60,000 a day production on location for a four day workshop he attended. Um, and uh, Rakesh is a super talented photographer and cinematographer. He asks the question, how is fashion photography different from lifestyle photography? So um, that's an excellent question. So a lot of times, uh, you know, fashion photography is usually a little bit easier, I would say, to identify. But fashion is essentially about the apparel. Right? It's about the clothes. It's about the wardrobe that we're wearing. The fashion imagery generally is very story and uh, very story driven and cinematic, um, generally a little edgier. Oftentimes the models are a bit more stoic, um, not so smiling. A lot of fashion photography tends to be um, more, tends to be a bit more lit, whereas lifestyle photography tends to be more natural. Um, lifestyle photography, I would say one of the biggest delineators between fashion and lifestyle is lifestyle. Lifestyle is all about happiness. It's all about happy, healthy, you know, people having fun, enjoying life. That's really what it's about is slice of life, lifestyle, advertising photography. And that's essentially what that is. Now, when it comes to fashion photography, it's a little bit different. It's not really about the people having fun and enjoying their life. It's more about how the, you know, it's putting on this, this perception, this view of what you want that brand to embody, you know? So if you think of a major brand like Dolce Gabbana or um, Prada or Louis Vuitton, it has a certain air of, you know, of elegance, of class, of sophistication. There is a lot of associations with the brands. So I wanna make sure that when you guys are, um, uh, you know, realizing 
um, what the difference is between fashion and lifestyle, identify that really fashion, it's all about um, who the client is. And in the case of fashion, the client is generally the brands, you know, the, one of those major fashion brands, brands, or it could be a magazine. But in a sense, the magazine, if you're shooting an editorial, a cover, or an inside spread, it still comes down to be all about that fashion um, story is still all about telling a story that is essentially going to get you to then buy the brands, which, you know, that's how magazines make money, is um, big brands. They spend a lot of money on um, advertising in fashion magazine uh, pages. So if you look, you know, you open up a, a Vogue magazine and you look at their September issue, which is coming out soon, you know, it's, uh, it's August right now. So in a couple of weeks, you're going to see um, the September issue, which is the biggest issue. It's the biggest fashion issue of the year uh, for Vogue magazine. And typically the ad spend for that is about $175,000 a page to be able to, you know, if you're a brand and you want to place your page and buy that page in Vogue magazine, $175,000 a page. Then you've got to look at, okay, well, if it's a double page spread, oftentimes, you know, fashion brands are going to spend more than just for one page. Sometimes they have two pages, four pages, and sometimes eight pages. So sometimes, you know, those ad spends for a brand might end up being a million dollars per magazine. Sometimes they might even want to buy a back cover, which might be double that might be $350,000 for that one page on the back cover or more. So a lot of that, of course, the, the fashion magazines are driven by the fashion ads and fashion ads essentially are selling product. So that's what we got to remember as a fashion photographer. Um, Rakesh has realized that fashion is all about the product, the apparel, and also when we're photographing it, I want you guys to think of it a little bit differently because with fashion photography, you know, essentially we want to um, make sure that everything is in razor sharp focus. And this is something that I know I had to work with you, Rakesh, on personally at the Newport Beach Workshop, where a lot of photographers, you know, they're usually shooting, you know, everything in F2.8, having a super shallow depth of field, everything else blown out, right? And, and that's great and all, you know, if, if that's your, your look and feel for, you know, something that you love to do. But listen, I don't recommend it for fashion photography or lifestyle photography or any commercial photography whatsoever. I highly recommend making sure your aperture is as deep as possible. And that's one of the secrets of fashion photography. Top fashion photographers never shoot anything in depth 2.8. And, and let me tell you why. If you're photographing me at f2.8 and say you're photographing with the intention of selling the suit, okay? And you're photographing me and I have my head tilted slightly to the side and you're shooting at me at f2.8, that means my eye is in focus. This other eye is not in focus and the garment is probably not in focus. And if you photographed it that way, then I can tell you what, that client, they're never gonna use those pictures. They just won't. In fact, they're gonna scrap the shoe, they're gonna hire a new photographer that's gonna photograph something at a deep aperture, making sure that everything, including the product you're selling, the, you know, the shirt, the jacket, whatever it is, is gonna be razor sharp throughout the image as well as both eyes, the face. And if you have multiple models, multiple models in the scene. When um, Rakesh was working with me a few weeks ago in our Newport Beach workshop, some of the scenes had five models in. And if you're shooting at 2.8, you're never gonna get them in focus. So I'd recommend always shooting at a deep aperture. If I can go at F11, F13, F16, that's my ideal. And remember, if you wanna have that beautiful, you know, just butter look where something's razor sharp, everything else is butter behind, you can always do it with a Gaussian blur in post-production. It's easy to do, but you can never, it's really, really, really hard to get that sharpness back. And I can show you some strategies. You can go on photographyworkshopseries.com, go to the video section, watch our retouching video, and we actually show you a strategy of how to bring some sharpening back in. But I tell you what, it's a lot harder to do. It's a lot harder to bring sharpening back when, um, when it's not there anymore. So just remember that, guys. Um, all right, so I see uh, a lot of other amazing um, photographers and uh, also people on our team. Um, that uh, are uh, joining us here. David Gesprek, great to see you, buddy. Can't wait to see you. Um, oh, Deanna, um, I, great to see you. I haven't seen you in ages. Uh, wonderful to see you guys on. Um, all right, we've got a lot of amazing photographers on here. People, some of them we have worked with for years. Some of them are new. Uh, we also have um, some of the people on our team, our photographic consultants, which I'd love to introduce to you guys today as well. Uh, we have... Um, uh, you know, the great uh, Ivan Pinilla. Um, we have um, Chelsea Frank is on. Um, 
it looks like uh, Daniel Rothschild, who's also one of our top photographic consultants, is on. Um, and I know Sean um, Ashanti should be joining us. Um, all right. Wonderful, guys. So uh, as people are joining and jumping on, um, we're going to have a huge audience today. Uh, but I'd really love for you guys to um, please, if you guys have any questions, um, please go ahead and put it in the Q&A. So we have a few questions so far, and I wanted to kind of get going with all of this uh, right away. So, all right. So let's go ahead and, um, and dive right in. And I want you guys to really think about, okay, what it is that, you know, what, what do you want to ask? What do you want to know about fashion photography? What kind of secrets about fashion photography do you want to reveal? You know, what is it? What is it about fashion that gets people so excited? You know, because oftentimes, you know, I put out there um, imagery and, and, and photographic workshops and things and, you know, and a lot of times people don't get as excited about certain ones, you know, portrait photography or, you know, lifestyle photography, things like that, you know, but when it comes to fashion, I have to say, like, people love fashion photography. They do. I mean, there's just something artistic about it. There, there's something amazing about it. There's so much storytelling about it. And I want you guys to ask the questions about what it is that you want to know. What kind of secrets do you want revealed about fashion photography? So that way that I can best, you know, go over this because I have so much to tell you guys today and it's going to be action packed, so much value, so much information. And I want you guys to hit as much out of this today as possible. So go ahead and put that in, um, in the uh, Q and A section, any pressing questions. And we are also just about to go live, um, on Facebook as well. Okay. All right, guys. So we are now going live on Facebook. So we're going to have an even bigger audience. So um, I have a feeling we're going to have about close to 500 people live today watching this. So um, I'd love, you know, if you guys are all jumping on, um, I see a lot of questions in the chat um, that we can see on our end from the panelist session. Please, guys, go ahead and put it in the Q&A so we can make sure that um, we can answer them one by one. All right. So, you know, first of all, I want to begin to, you know, for many of you guys do know me, but some of you do not. And I want to, you know, to, just to show you, like, I guess, you know, essentially my experience and who I am. Um, this is, uh, this is some of my work. So I'm a celebrity fashion advertising photographer, and I, um, I, I've had my entire career devoted to shooting large scale ad campaigns, uh, shooting fashion editorials. Um, to, uh, to be able to um, photograph, you know, storytelling. Really, that's what it comes down to. Whether it's a big fashion story, whether it's a lifestyle advertising campaign, um, whether, you know, whoever I'm shooting for, I have built a career and a name for myself. I've been, you know, published in 175 magazine editorials um, with over a dozen covers. I've shot um, for major fashion branding campaigns for uh, brands such as Zara and Levi's. I've also had the opportunity to shoot huge lifestyle campaigns for brands like Pepsi and Smirnoff and Miller Lite and Coors Light um, and Unice. So I, uh, I have a lot of experience in the high-end fashion and advertising market, and that's all I've done my whole career. I did my bachelor's and my MFA to be a professor of photography at the Academy of Art San Francisco. And um, so, you know, I love to also have you know, this, to, to engage in the theoretical aspects of image making and the discourse on photography and fashion photography. So that's, you know, that, that's, a, that's an aspect of it. But what's more important to me is to reveal some of the secrets of fashion photography, okay? So for instance, this image right here that you see, this is one of the beautiful things about fashion photography uh, as opposed to just about any other type of, you know, of photography as well as even video, is that an image like this this was photographed all in camera, straight in camera with a 30 second exposure, shooting inside a ballroom and in photographing a scene that is so dark that everything just goes to pretty much blackness, right? The model is literally standing in the dark. But I was able to light this where not only, of course, the model is highly styled. This is at our Chicago Fashion Workshop, by the way, which we're going to have in a couple of weeks here in Chicago. That's um, going to be absolutely epic. Um, but I was able to cast top models from Ford and Elite, 
um, and uh, top tier talent. And they were able to create a scene in which I shot this with a 30 second exposure. I believe this was at around F11. Um, and so everything is razor sharp. And then what I was able to do is then even though it's a dragging the shutter at 30 seconds, ISO 100, I was able to then flash strobe and create this razor sharp image where even if you look at her eye, her eye is razor sharp. Everything in this image is razor sharp with her face and her body and her outfit. But I didn't have any ghosting because I shot this in a way where I had, even though it was a super long exposure, it was, it was so dark because we have the difference between the candlelight in the background, which is rendering at about 1900 degrees Kelvin, which renders about red on, um, on your camera, but also very, very dim. But they're all behind her and they're also very, very dim. So her, you know, being lit from the front, she had nothing lighting her from the front, just very distant candlelight. So it really isn't making any negligible difference. But I brought in multiple strobes. I had one strobe coming in, like if I'm looking at her right here, uh, from camera left, from the back, and coming in at approximately a 45 degree angle, where I put a light, a strobe on a pro photo, a strobe on a C stand, and I, I put it back behind her and then angle the light back towards her, creating this beautiful rim. I then brought in a large softbox. I believe I had a three by four foot softbox coming in from the right side with then a beauty dish directly in front of that softbox. And then another beauty dish below that. So I had a beauty dish, beauty dish below it, and then softbox behind both. So I created a nice elegant light over her, then a little bit harsher on her face and on her, her lower body to make her completely stand out from the background. And then what I did was flag um, the area of the, so that basically beneath the, uh, on the lower half of her and the carpet area does not get any light pollution coming from the strobes. And that was one of the most tricky parts because the strobes are very, very bright and intense. And I had to make sure that the strobes do not hit that carpet because it would illuminate it. So what I did was I flagged it, meaning I took like black flags um, or you can use like black material or anything to block, basically block the light from, from going anywhere you do not want it to go. So creating a dynamic fashion story with a 30 second exposure is very, very hard to do. And a lot of fashion photographers would never sit here and describe how they did something like this. But this was all done in camera. And I actually did this on location at the Palmer House Hilton, Chicago. And I did it during the Chicago Fashion Photography Workshop, which was pretty fantastic. So these are all shot and published in the LA Fashion Magazine. And we shot an incredible story. So it's fantastic. But I photographed all over the world from shooting in, in um, Milan, uh, this was shot in Rome, to photographing in Istanbul, uh, to um, you know, being at Milan Fashion Week, uh, shooting all over the world. So I, you know, I've had an opportunity to do some pretty fantastic stuff. But I'll be honest, some of the greatest stuff I've actually ever shot was actually not even for clients. It was actually at our epic photography workshops, which is kind of special because we create such over the top, massive scale production that the imagery created is just incredible. You know, and the, the outfits, the wardrobe is just absolutely over the top. Okay, so that's a little bit about who I am. I've also had the opportunity to be um, the TV host and director of the TV show Great Escapes that airs on NBC and the CW. So um, I've been able to actually do photo shoots um, during episodes of our TV show. And um, to give you a little bit of a preview, this gives you a little bit of a tease of about what it is. Now it's a travel show, so it's a little bit, you know, it's not really as high fashion um, or anything, but we are doing shoots on location. And this gives you a little tease of what our next show is going to be like. But um, we are going to be offering some absolutely incredible on location fashion uh, travel photographic workshops in 2021 and 2022, where we are going to be going to places like Bora Bora, the Maldives, um, and the Seychelles. Uh, and we're going to be shooting with top tier uh, celebrity fashion models that are going to be coming with us. We're going to be shooting on location. Uh, that's what we're going to be calling our dream luxe experiences. So they're a little bit more high end and we're staying at all high end five star resorts at these places, but we're going to be shooting at places just like this, just like we did during Great Escapes. So this is something, if you guys are interested, um, we are just rolling this out and literally announcing it for the very first time right here live. So this is something pretty special and we're gonna be photographing, we're gonna be doing high-end filming productions at these locations and uh, we're gonna be offering the opportunity for you to come with us um, on these epic experiences to places like the Maldives, Bora Bora, 
to Miss Seychelles. So would uh, would love to see you guys on that. Um, we're also announcing some other really fantastic travel experiences um, then, that are going to be happening in 2022. Uh, and we're also going to be discussing some of our, our epic fashion castle experience in France. Shot at a 46 room castle um, that I actually just purchased. So uh, we're going to be shooting on location at that and you guys are going to actually have a stay at a 46 room castle and photograph the top supermodels from Paris. So that's going to be something that's going to be also really, really exceptional as well. So anyway, I just want to give you guys a quick little introduction about who I am, who we are, and, um, and then also I want to essentially showcase some of what we are going to be um, you know, discussing today as far as some of the secrets of fashion photography. Okay, so first of all, one of the things in, in my eyes that's the most valuable, the most important thing photographically in fashion photography, it's your production. And this is where a lot of photographers miss the boat. They think, a lot of photographers have the misperception that doing fashion photography is really about the fashion photography. It's about the photography. It's not. I want to make that really clear. I don't care how good of a photographer you are. I don't care if you are the most amazing world class, if you're a Pulitzer Prize winner, or if you're just some mind-blowing photographer that is just the, the greatest photographer in the world. If you don't have the right production, the images are not gonna be worthwhile. They're not gonna be worth putting in your portfolio. And what I mean by production is I mean having top tier models and supermodels. Because remember, your, your perceived, your brand is only as strong as your portfolio. Your portfolio is only as strong as the images in your portfolio. And the images in your portfolio are only as strong as the models in those images. And in fashion photography, it's even more important. Okay, I talked about this a little bit at one of our lifestyle workshops, but I can tell you what, for fashion photography, it is so critical, I can't even tell you. You have to have top models and supermodels without question. So if you're not working with top models that have been in Vogue, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, the campaigns for the Bulova campaign, uh, campaigns for Prada or Versace, you're never going to be able to shoot high fashion photography. It's just not going to happen. Because remember this, you're competing against the biggest photographers in the world. You're competing against photographers, Annie Leibovitz, Mario Testino. You're, you're creating, you're, you're working with some of the most epic, high-end, big-time celebrity fashion photographers in the world. And all they have in their portfolio are celebrities and supermodels that have been in vogue in Vanity Fair. So if you're going to try to compete and shoot at the highest level and shoot for a campaign like Prada or Louis Vuitton or Versace or something, you have to have nothing but a 40 image cohesive body of work of the best top images of your portfolio. Each scene has to be a different outfit change, a different wardrobe change. And the models have to be A-list top supermodels without question. And if you don't have that, it's never going to happen for you. No one will ever take you seriously. And that's really important. And it's kind of a hard lesson to learn, but trust me, you have to have that body of work. You have to have top models and supermodels in your portfolio. So you've got to produce, you have to create a world-class production. Now, the challenge with this, obviously, is it's expensive. World-class productions are really expensive. A lot of fashion brands don't even want to pay for them. But I'm, I'm going to move on and, and tell you some secrets about how to make that happen. Now, most importantly, obviously, are models. Models are absolutely the most vital component. So what I do, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of strategy and techniques and some secrets that I'm going to reveal um, when it comes to model casting and finding top-tier models. Okay, so for me, one of the, the ways that I do it is because I've been in the industry so long because I have what we call a world-class photographic currency, meaning I have this high-end fashion work that I've shot for big-time magazines and I've shot supermodels before. So when I come to the table and I, and I contact a modeling agency, and they know who I am and they look at my work, they look at my website and they're like, oh yeah, Kevin, okay, who do you want? Yeah, I'm, for, it's Kevin Michael Schmitz here. Uh, let's give you um, this supermodel that's been in Vogue or you want this supermodel that's been in Vanity Fair or you know, which one do you want? And they're going to give me a whole, usually they open it up to their entire board of models. Okay. And in, even irregardless of what the budget is, even if I don't have a high-end budget, even if I don't have $10,000 a day for mo per model, they're still going to open it up for me because of my photographic currency. My photographic currency, it, it's all about the imagery. It's all about my portfolio. It's that portfolio that I just showed you. And when, you, when they look at that, 
when they get excited about imagery like that, when they see that photography and they're like, oh my God, you have worked with top tier models. You've shot incredible stuff. You've been published. Then, then they get excited. Then they get amped. You know, so when you see things like this and they see the, the massive scale production shooting with a parachute, shooting with Belena from Vogue magazine. And by the way, um, this was at our last elite masterclass in LA. But when they see content like this, those modeling agencies, hey, they open up the doors to me. Okay. But if you don't have content like this and say you have just some portrait photography or wedding photography or maybe model test photography where, you know, you did some little model tests for the agencies, they don't take you seriously. Those modeling agencies are going to not only probably not answer the phone, not respond to your email, or if they do, it, they're probably going to say they're not interested in working with you. Or they might send you their bottom of the barrel what we call new faces models, which are the youngest ones that are new to their board, that are not booking any work yet, that neither portfolio's done, that's not gonna help you, okay? So what I, what I wanna make clear is that if you wanna shoot high-end work and do fashion at the highest level, which I imagine most of you do, then you've gotta have high-end talent and high-end production, okay? So what I recommend, and this is what I did when I very, very, very first started. I moved down, um, in fact, I moved to, um, San Francisco to go to grad school to get my MFA in photography. And I moved there um, in, uh, it, I believe it was um, uh, in 2006. And I had, um, you know, and I had nothing but a student portfolio. But what I did was I started contacting all the modeling agencies and I showed them my work. But I showed them stuff that was more story, had more story to it, right? And I, and I expressed like what I wanted to shoot for with them. And I even went in and I, and I tried to meet with them. So I went in in person. Just a punk 22 year old kid. I went in in person and met with Ford Model San Francisco. And I met with, I believe at the time, it was Leonard McCants, who was the, the, uh, the men's director at the time. Um, he went on to be um, like a head honcho at like, um, you know, one of the big, um, you know, agencies doing high end fashion brands and stuff like that. Um, but what was cool is that when I started, I started, I met them and I expressed what I was going to do. And I was on a mission and I was passionate and excited. And I convinced them to give me some of their models. It was Ford Modeling Agency. You know, it was the best agency uh, that was up in San Francisco. And I convinced them to give me some of their top models. And it was fantastic because I started to shoot some amazing stuff. But here's the thing. Here's the secret of what I did. Instead of photographing model tests, which many of you guys do, where, you know, you get models from the agency and you want to photograph them for their portfolios. I had no interest in that crap because I don't care. I'm not shooting something for the models. I could care less about that. The models are not my clients. What I'm looking for is the storytelling. What I'm looking for is the fashion magazine editorial that's gonna tell a story and be fantastic and be world-class styled, everything. So what I did was I, I pitched to them what I wanted to shoot. I got a wardrobe stylist to get involved and I convinced wardrobe stylists by contacting styling agencies and contacting even at the time I was 22, styling students that were be, trying to become fashion stylists. And then contacting top makeup, era and, uh, makeup and hairstylists, the A-list ones, and expressing to them, listen, this is a story. This is an editorial story I want to shoot. And I want to pitch this to some magazines. Do you want to be involved? And they were interested. And they saw my work and they got excited because they saw some of my photographic currency of what I created already. And then what I did at 22 years old, I started pitching those ideas to the modeling agency. The modeling agency gave me their models. And then I started shooting stories. So instead of shooting model tests, I shot stories. And the stories were interesting. And the modeling agency started being intrigued, even though they weren't for their model portfolios. They were very obvious. They were not for their model portfolios, meaning they're not just up close shots of their face, you know, or three quarters shots of them looking forward. Okay. These were shots where they were they were designed to be stories. They were just like I was showing you on my website. They're, it's not about the model. It's about the story that I'm telling around the model. And it's about the wardrobe and everything going on. So I started creating that. And, and it's funny enough, those agencies actually responded. They loved it. They actually liked it more. The fact that I was photographing some story rather than just a model test. Because the model tests are so boring. And they want it to look like their models are in big magazines. Right? So I ended up pitching these to magazines and I got my first publication at 22. I got published in CMYK magazine. Um, I got published in a series of other magazines um, early on. It got, got paid almost nothing, like 500 bucks or something like that. But it gave me the confidence 
to when I, you know, after, you know, the, doing the whole MFA thing in photography, I moved down to Los Angeles with nothing. Literally, I had nothing but like $200,000 in debt. I had no parental help. My parents never helped me with a dime. It was all me. And I was able to move down to Los Angeles. I found a place on Manhattan Beach and I moved in. But here's the critical thing that I did. And this is the next secret of fashion photography. I didn't piss money away on overhead. And that's what almost every single one of you guys do. I'm talking to you. You piss money away on overhead. What I mean by that is studios. Having a photographic studio is absolutely insane to have right now in 2020. There's no reason to have a photographic studio. If you guys have one, I would recommend getting rid of it. There's literally no reason. Okay, it just is a huge expense and it doesn't help your brand whatsoever as a photographer. I would also not waste money on equipment, right? Equipment, I know you're a bunch of gearheads out there. Oh, I want the new Canon. Oh, I want the new Nikon. Oh, I want the new, you know, Leica or I want the new Hasselblad. I could care less about that. The equipment doesn't even matter. That doesn't make you a good photographer. The equipment is a huge waste of money. The only thing you need is an SLR, digital camera, which you probably already have. I would recommend having something basic, like getting some scrim gym cines, which are like 500 bucks that cost like very little with some C-stands, which are also very inexpensive and sandbags. And then when you get a client to pay for you, when you book a client, that's when you invest in your equipment. You don't buy equipment now, that's insane. You get the client to pay for it. I would never buy equipment without having my client pay for it. And I would recommend you do the same. And what I mean by that is when I get hired to shoot a job, they rent equipment from me. They're giving me a budget. Oftentimes it's five, 10, 20, $30,000 in equipment costs. And what I do is I just go out and buy equipment and then rent it to myself. And I'd recommend you do that too if you don't do it already. That's insane if you don't. And I mean rent everything from your camera to rent it yourself, $250 a day. I mean from your lighting equipment, all your lighting gear, your scrim gyms, your sandbags, your C-stands, your monitor. I bring my monitor, my computer on set. I charge for everything. And I bill myself for that. And that's standard practice. But make sure you guys are billing for that. But do, do not waste money. That's one of the biggest secrets of fashion photography. Do not waste money on overhead. Okay, overhead is worthless, especially now more. I've been preaching this for the last 11 years. <laughs> and people don't listen. People say, oh, I need a studio, studio, studio. No, you don't. You do not need a studio. And you know what? I've actually consulted with several photographers over this whole pandemic, and a lot of them are losing their shirt. They're getting shafted because they have a studio, and it's just a huge, huge waste of money. And now some of them are going bankrupt. Some of them are losing everything. Some of them are, you know, now they're, they're stuck, and they have all this overhead, and they don't know what to do. And they're absolutely stuck. I don't want you guys to be in that place. I don't want you to waste money. What I'd recommend more than anything else is that you, each and every one of you, you need to invest in what's important. Do not invest in your equipment or your studio or any other waste of money. It is absolutely unnecessary, okay? You need to invest in your portfolio. You need to invest in your photographic currency, because that's the only thing that matters, is your photographic currency. To a client, that's all they care about. It's your photographic currency. Who are you? Who have you photographed for? What big magazines? What covers have you shot, right? That's what they care about. They wanna know, like, what kind of supermodels have you have in your book? That's what they care about. They don't care about, you know, if you have some random studio space in Wisconsin or Texas, they could care less. In fact, it actually hurts your brand to have that. Because when I get hired on a campaign, in fact, I was just talking about this um, with somebody yesterday. I, when I got hired on my first Smirnoff campaign, I would, I, even if I owned a studio, I wouldn't have used it for that. But Smirnoff's a huge client. So what I did was instead of, you know, if I, I didn't have a studio, but even if I had a studio, I wouldn't have used my own studio. I rented a world-class high-end commercial studio a world-class one in LA, a top tier one, expensive. You know, these are like $1,200 or $1,500 a day studios. But that's what the client demands. If you work with a high-end client, they expect to have A-list high-end studios. Like in LA, you know, Coyote Studios would be like a high-end studio. You know, like Fifth and Sense, some of the big ones that are big time world-class studios. 
if it's sh Chicago, magnanimous, that's like one of the top tier ones in Chicago. Love it, right? And they're actually one of our sponsors for the workshop series. They're incredible top tier studios. Those are the ones you want to work with. You don't want to work with these, you know, your, your local yokel random little photographic studio. It's a waste. It's such a waste. And honestly, even for consumer photography, it's generally a waste unless you live in the Arctic tundra and you have to have it in the winter time to shoot. I get that. But other than that, it's a big waste of money. And, and if you do need to do that, rent a studio space only for the winter time. Don't waste your money. Because in fashion photography, the budgets are not as big as lifestyle advertising photography. So you have to be a lot more careful, a lot more mindful. So if you wanna be successful, do what I did. I was a 22 year old kid with $200,000 in debt. But when I came down there in like 2008 to LA and the entire economy collapsed and recession was looming and everybody was going bankrupt and everybody's freaking out just like it is now right now, I saw all the big photographers just collapse. So many photographers just lost everything. They lost their shirts. And they did because they misinvested. They had too many employees, they had studios, they had all this unnecessary equipment. They had big overhead and I saw one after another file for bankruptcy. And these were top photographers. These were photographers that were, were making two, three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a shoot. But even them, they wasted their money and overinvested. And so I am urging you, whatever you do, invest only in two things. The secrets of fashion photography, your epic photographic portfolio, your portfolio, which is your body of work and literally the only thing that matters. And then the marketing to market that portfolio. That's literally the only thing that matters. So if you guys think that something else matters in photography, you're, you're sadly mistaken. And I want to be really clear about that. I need you guys to really think about what's valuable. And that's why, you know, over the last 11 years, we have consulted with photographers and guided them to take their photography. But for, for instance, we have a, a young woman on today as one of our panelists, Maureen Eggleton, you guys are gonna meet her. Um, she's, she's, she's a great fine art photographer. She's from Mexico and um, she uh, got it, wanted to get into fashion. She came to our, our epic uh, fashion workshop in Los Angeles, our elite masterclass. And not only did she shoot the greatest images she's ever shot in her lifetime, but we just got her published in Photo Nostrum magazine. She also just got published in Vogue Italia. And Maureen is completely just on another level now. And it all started with a workshop series. And I'm gonna introduce you guys to her um, today as well because she is a, a complete superstar and I'm so absolutely proud of her. Okay, now one thing I want to discuss, if you guys are interested um, in developing your body of work and you actually do care about doing something in fashion photography, right? And learning the secrets of a fashion photography and developing an epic portfolio, a body of work that you can be proud of and they can land you clients and click on the link right there and you can set up a free photographic portfolio review with one of the people on my team, professional photographic consultants. And, and if you have a specific one that you wanna work with, you're gonna meet them today. Daniel Rothschild is a world-class photographic consultant who um, you know, is one of the top people on my team and is just an absolute gem to work with. I mean, he has given me some amazing advice and guidance. Um, Chelsea Frank is, um, is absolutely a powerhouse when it comes to fashion. She's also, she does um, fashion styling and consults for photographers. And then Sean Ashanti, is, his expertise is actually in film production and video production. And um, so for him, and he consults photographers and directors. So if you guys have a recommended one that you want to work with specifically, let us know. But please go ahead and click that link in the chat because that will give you the opportunity um, to set up a free 30-minute to hour for, you know, photographic consult with someone on our team. And what's beautiful about this is that you know, it's totally free and it's going to be an opportunity for you to kind of start with like, okay, you know, if I really want to do this in my career, you know, it starts with your portfolio, okay? And we also, if you've already done a photographic portfolio review, we are also offering photographic marketing strategy sessions as well. So, you know, it all starts with portfolio, but the second aspect of that is your strategy session. And marketing is everything. And for those of you, you photographers on right now that I have consulted with, or you've consulted with one of our photographers, or our photography consultants already, feel free to set up another one. It's okay. We're here for you. 
We're literally here for you. We are absolutely dedicated to our photographers. And we wanna make sure that each and every one of you maximizes your potential. Because if you don't, you guys are wasting your time. You know, if you're trying to do some other photographic career or trying to do something like shooting portraits when you don't really even like portraits, you wish you shot fashion, you know, or you're doing something completely different, shooting products or events, but you really wish you shot fashion, stop wasting your time. Do what you love. Because at the end of the day, 10, 20, 30 years from now, you're going to be so, so frustrated that you didn't actually go out and do what you wanted to do. Okay, it's absolutely critical that each and every one of you is actually pursuing your dream and your goal. And if your goal is fashion photography, let's make it happen. Why not? You know, don't waste any more time. You know, I want to make sure that each and every one of you can meet your potential. So please click on that link and set up a consult with somebody on our team. It's a free consult. And I would love to see where you guys come up with because a lot of these people that are, you know, we've done consults with are now going to be a, a panelist. We've got, I think, six panelists today, and they're going to talk about their experiences, about consulting with us, about how, you know, transforming their careers with their photographic portfolio by attending our workshops. And they're going to, and you're going to see from, from firsthand what that's all about. It's incredible. So I want you guys to realize that the most critical aspect, remember, in fashion photography, the secrets to fashion photography is the production for your shoots that goes into that epic portfolio that you're going to photograph and that you're going to showcase to clients. They're going to get you jobs. They're going to get you opportunities. Okay. And within that portfolio, in within that production, models are going to be one of the most important things. It just so happens that I have access to the biggest supermodels in the world. The last workshop we just shot, the last one we just did in, um, in Newport Beach, and it was a lifestyle workshop. It wasn't even a fashion workshop. And we had top models from Victoria's Secret. We had a model from Vogue. We had one from the Bulba campaign. We had a model from Elle, Vanity Fair. Um, I mean, we had unbelievable top models. We even had Valeria, who is a guest model. It was unreal. The models knocked it out of the park. And it was the, honestly one of the best castings we've ever had in the history of the photography workshop series in the midst of the pandemic. It actually gives me an opportunity to cast even more famous models because a lot of productions have slowed. So it gives us the opportunity to book them for our epic photographic workshops. And they're super eager to work with us because they know the level of product, the level of quality that we shoot at the workshops is so high end. It's so over the top. It's so massive scale that it's gonna give them the opportunity to get published it's gonna give those models an opportunity to get out there, to get seen and to have a body of work that's gonna completely take those models to the next level, okay? So that's absolutely key. And if you guys are interested and you guys love fashion photography, and if you do want it, feel free to share with your photographic consultant um, or let us know now if you are interested. We have an epic fashion workshop. Now we, have, we only allow 10 photographers in. This one has nine photographers right now in Chicago. It happen, it's happening in two weeks. And I actually just got off the phone um, with um, our, uh, the person handling our locations. We're booking multi-million dollar epic mansion estates we're gonna be photographing at in the Chicago suburbs area. And we're gonna be shooting at multiple different locations. It's gonna be mind blowing. Um, we're casting top tier fashion models and we're gonna be shooting a vintage Mad Men editorial. It's gonna be incredible like this. And, on top of this, in addition to shooting this epic fashion story with top tier models from the top agencies, we're also get, we also have coordinated some incredible vintage cars. We're gonna be working with a 1960 Shelby Cobra convertible, as you see right here, this exact car. And we're also gonna be working with a 1957 Parisienne, as you see right here, this exact same car. So I'm super excited, the kind of props that we have involved, which again, you know, in addition to the models, we also have to prop it. We have to have the right locations. We have to have the right styling, the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, the production, the lighting equipment, all of that stuff. Every little detail has to be perfect. And at, at these workshops, like the one in Chicago, it is going to be absolutely perfect. Every little detail, just like you see here, shot at the last Chicago workshop. In fact, this was shot in the rain. We shot this in the rain in Chicago, and you can even see on the windshield it's got rain, but we shot it no matter what the weather conditions are, and it was absolutely incredible. So I get excited because that content, that, that body of work is mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. 
Okay. So please, if you guys are uh, interested in taking your portfolio to the next level, if you want to just have a simple portfolio review, if you want to go over marketing strategy, or you want to talk about any of these epic experiences, please click on that link. It's a free consult and set up a photographic consult strategy session and portfolio review with one of our team members. Would love to, would love to see you guys there. And I think it'd be really beneficial for you right now. Okay, so before I get to some more of your questions, I, I wanted to tackle another secret in fashion photography, okay? Another secret in fashion photography is, you know, other than models, the styling is everything, okay? Fashion stylists are absolutely critical. I can't even tell you how important they are. If you don't have a fashion stylist, you don't have a photo shoot, okay? The photo shoot for fashion is literally contingent on the styler. So if you try to style your own shoots, you think that you're a stylist or you just, you know, do it yourself or you have the models just bring their own clothes or whatever, that is never going to be considered high end by a client. It's, you're never going to have Vogue magazine or Vanity Fair or Prada or Louis Vuitton ever even consider you, not even in the same ballpark. You have to have a world-class top fashion stylist. Now, top fashion stylists, they're expensive. They range between the top ones, you know, they're the ones I you know, normally work with. They're oftentimes about $2,000 a day to do fashion style. Sometimes you can get them as little as $1,500, but it's usually $2,000 a day. And then if it's, a, you know, for instance, in Chicago, it's going to be a four-day shoot. So for four days times 2,000 a day, it's actually 8,000, you know, for, for a top tier fashion stylist. And then on top of that, you actually have to do prep time to pull the clothes and then wrap time to return the clothes. So oftentimes they, they, they either bill you the full amount or you might be able to convince them to bill you half amount for the days prepped and the days returning because you have to pull clothes, buy clothes, return clothes, or pull clothes from showrooms, use them, and then return them. Showrooms are essentially, the fashion houses all have showrooms where they're gonna allow you to take out and borrow the fashion outfits, the, the epic dresses and things like that, or the, the menswear, and you can you know, borrow it for the shoots and give it back, okay? So fashion stylists, you know, for something like this, it, it's gonna be um, you know, maybe uh, 15 to $20,000 in fashion styling as far as uh, what the budget for something like that typically would be. So just the styling alone, and without that, you don't have a shoot. So if you wanna do real fashion, you're gonna to have to come up with a huge budget, especially for like a four day shoot like that. Um, $15,000 just for the wardrobe, that's minimum, minimum. Plus you're gonna need a wardrobe styling assistant for all those days and return days. Um, plus they often ask for a buy budget. So you're gonna allocate maybe 10 to $20,000 to like purchase clothes. Hopefully you can also get that money back and have it returned back to you. I do that all the time. I'm, I'm buying like $10,000 of a wardrobe for every shoot I do. And then I just buy and return it. But still having the styling, styling is key and it's super, super expensive, but it's vital. Without it, it's, it the shoot's dead. Okay. Then we got to look at your makeup and hair. So I like to work with, for instance, in LA, we just worked with, in Newport Beach, we just worked with the creative director from L'Oreal, Dorico Jackson who is literally the top hairstylist in LA, and this, he's incredible. He styled the majority of what you guys saw in the content that I showed you. Um, he's also, I believe, 2,000 a day for his um, hairstyling. So when I book him on a big ad campaign, that's his rate. He'll, he'll they'll, they'll bend for you if it's an editorial, but generally that's the rate, okay? Then makeup, makeup is critical. You have to have an amazing makeup artist. Now, makeup and hair people are going to be a little bit easier to find because even in places like you know rural areas they still you have professional makeup and hair people that are going to do makeup and hair for weddings so you're, they're a little bit easier to find wardrobe stylists though are a, they are not a dime a dozen they are one of the, the needles in the haystack to find and they are so hard to find and work with good ones and in my career i've been doing this a long time and i've worked with thousands of fashion stylists and out of the thousands of fashion stylists i've worked with I've only liked, and I mean liked, maybe four in, in my entire career. Because most of them are either very difficult to work with, they're, um, they, they don't pull off the job right, they don't have the right taste, uh, they don't show up on time, they don't return things properly, so then you get foot with a bill afterwards. Um, you have all kinds of problems that, that come out, and oftentimes they are a big source of drama. So fashion styles, it's just the nature of this business. But in, in the fashion industry, you have to work with fashion styles. And fashion styles are a lot harder to find than hair and makeup people. And they're some of the most difficult people to deal with. But they're the most important after the models. The models are most important. Stylists are next. Okay? Word of stylists, then hair and makeup. 
Okay. And then you can also have a prop stylist. So you, know, you see a lot of the props in some of these scenes and see how epic they are. That, that really adds to the, to the quality of work. Okay. Um, so, you know, when you look at, for instance, something like um, uh, what we did at our elite masterclass, um, you know, we shot here with a parachute on location. Now, this is a very sophisticated scene. And when you're shooting with a parachute, it's a very, very complex story to tell because the prop is so difficult. It's dealing with the wind. We're using giant fans to blow it up. The thing's tied to a giant production vehicle. Um, uh, at one point, we also had it tied to a ladder. You have issues. I mean, there's all kinds of chaos that goes with that. But prop styling is key. Hair, makeup, wardrobe, prop styling, um, the wardrobe itself, the models, and then the location. Location. So this is another secret in fashion photography. Okay. Um, one of the things that I love is I love to, and I highly recommend this, always get a private estate. Try not to shoot publicly. Okay. I've done both. And, first, and, and even not only on my own jobs, but even early on in the photography workshop series, I had the, the crazy idea to like shoot in public spaces. Like, on the beach in Manhattan Beach, right? Now, I live right here on Hermosa Beach, and since this is my private residence, I shoot in front of my house all the time, and I don't have any problems because I can plug electrical into my house. But if you were to shoot publicly out there and you need to bring generators, electrical generators and things like that, uh, it becomes very complex, the police will shut you down, and they're gonna charge you huge fines, okay? Um, and I don't even wanna deal with that. It's a freaking mess, it's such a hassle. So don't shoot in public spaces. You've got to deal with permits. You have to deal with all kinds of drama from people out in the public. Uh, weather conditions, you have to rent an RV or a motorhome to bring on location to prep your hair, makeup, and wardrobe in. And oftentimes, I even have to get two motorhomes because one is not enough. Um, because if you have maybe one motorhome just for the wardrobe, one for hair and makeup, it becomes very expensive to rent motorhomes and have power and electrical and generators and all of that to do a real production, of course. So my suggestion is a private location. So I love, like, just like the Newport Beach workshop, we shot at a multi-million dollar home in um, Newport Beach. For the upcoming Chicago workshops, we're going to be shooting at multiple multi-million dollar, epic, massive scale estates, giant, giant mansion estates. So for me, you know, that's pretty awesome uh, because not only do you have a beautiful space to shoot at, but most importantly, you have somewhere comfortable. And I can't tell you how important that is to have comfort because the models are only going to perform if they're comfortable. They're only being excited and give you their all if those models are comfortable, right? That's super, super important for them to be comfortable. So I want to make sure that, you know, I'm going to have an amazing, you know, I, I need bathroom facilities, hopefully multiple, more than one bathroom, but, you know, nice bathroom facilities, an area to, to stage in, to do hair and makeup in. And then, you know, during this era with Corona and stuff, oftentimes it needs to be a place that's really well ventilated um, or maybe even outside, but it's not too hot outside. So it needs to be, there, it, there needs to be just the right spot and the spot that they, because they're going to be in there for hours, typically on a shoot three to four hours of styling per model in the beginning you know, in the beginning of the day. So if they get there at 9 a.m., we might not sh start shooting until 12, 30, or 1 because the styling takes so long. But they need to feel comfortable. Next secret of fashion photography, craft services. Food is critical, guys, absolutely critical. If you don't have good food on your shoot, no one will go take you seriously, and, and the models are going to be upset. Uh, their production team's going to upset. be upset. I mean, I've had people show, I've seen productions where people show up with, like, Subway sandwiches for, um, or, or no food at all, where they, they ask the, you know, them to go get their own food. Forget that. Are you kidding me? You have to have good food. I also highly recommend another secret. Do not order from restaurants. That's the worst thing to do because if you order individual meals from restaurants, you, it, they'll always screw it up. And then you have a pissed off model. They didn't get the right, you know, vegan, gluten-free, blah, 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 whatever it is. And they mess it up 100% of the time. I've never had a restaurant get it right in the thousands of productions I've done. They always screw it up. So what I recommend is getting a high-end caterer. Caterers, weirdly enough, are actually not as, they're, they're often about the same price as ordering from restaurants when it's all said and done. So um, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a caterer. Getting a good caterer, somebody that shows up on time and they have a variety of different foods and you can have um, different types of foods to, to fill all the dietary requirements. This is critical. I know it sounds silly, but food is critical. And if those of you guys who attended the last workshop, um, one of the comments that I received from just about everybody was, oh my goodness, the food was spectacular. 
The food was so delicious. I mean, I had this top chef in Newport Beach bring in all this massive spread with all different types of food from gluten-free to keto uh, to vegetarian to, uh, to, to what you'd want if you're a carnivore. I mean, I had from you know, tri-tip and chicken to, um, to gourmet salads, salads to, um, uh, to keto cheesecake, to all different kinds of things. But it made everybody on set happy and really, really, and really important. So I want to make sure when you guys are doing a fashion shoot, you have to have good food. It is critical to have everyone happy and to be able to get the most out of your models on set, okay? So we've got your models, hair, makeup, wardrobe, food, location, props, equipment. Equipment is key next, okay? Now equipment is important to have you know, enough gear. You don't need to go overboard, but enough gear. Now, oftentimes if I'm traveling, like I'm traveling to Chicago in two weeks, I'm gonna bring some of my own lighting equipment, my own pro photo gear, right? I'm gonna bring like my acute packs um, and also my pro photo B1s, but I'm also gonna be, I can't, obviously not gonna transport the big, transport the big expensive or the big uh, heavy stuff that's not very expensive. So I'm gonna rent um, the C stands, you know, to put the lights on, the sandbags, to, to you know, weigh down the, the, um, uh, the stands, also scrim gym sinnies, which are the giant scrims and bounces, and then the modifiers, like beauty dishes and stuff, and seven inch reflectors. My favorite modifiers on a fashion shoot would definitely be beauty dishes. Beauty dishes are my absolute favorite. Seven inch reflectors are amazing as well. They're basically, the beauty dishes has a disc where the light hits the disc, goes back into the parabola and comes back out. Seven inch reflector, the light is just, it's a naked bulb, so it goes through, but it's guided by a seven inch reflector. And, um, and those are my two favorite. After that, I would say the seven foot diameter octobox and also giant ring lights. So I also have like a four, uh, five foot diameter giant ring light. So it's a giant ring light where I can stand inside of it and the ring is around me. But those are my favorite types of lights. Um, I would say the beauty dish is what I use probably 90% of the time in fashion. Um, or I'm going to be using a giant scrim and bounce where everything's very natural and real and authentic, just similar to how I shoot with lifestyle. But having all that equipment, have, making sure it works, making sure the electrical is on, also, I like to have a fan, like a fan to blow the hair. Um, I usually bring a couple of fans or another secret of fashion photography is a, one way to do it is to use leaf blowers. I use leaf blowers a lot because they're very portable and I can have a hairstyle stand on the side and leaf blow the hair flowing off to the one side. And that, that's how we create that magic, okay? So that's critical. And then also guys, you got to have fantastic assistance, photographic assistance. So if you don't have an assistance, please get some assistance, all right? Now they can be, even if they're not skilled with photography or whatever, just even a friend or a helper, people that help you on set, the more people you have, the better. I'm gonna have a whole crew of people in Chicago. I'll probably have like five assistants with me throughout the entire workshop because I wanna make sure all the details, I need people to make sure the lights are set up. I need to make sure that nothing's gonna be blown over with the wind. I need to make sure that you know people have beverages, that food, whatever, all the details have to be perfect. And the more assistance you have, the better, okay? So make sure that every little detail of these productions is on point and you guys have it. This is key, this is absolutely key, all right? Also, Please, if you guys are interested in learning more about this or developing your portfolio or reviewing your portfolio, please click on the link in the chat um, to set up your own free 30-minute photographic portfolio review or strategy session with one of our photographic consultants, and they'll go over personally with you. And sometimes I even jump on to meet you personally. So, um, all right, now I know I talked a while about a lot of strategies and secrets of photography. I'd love to answer some of your guys' questions. I'm gonna answer a couple of questions and then I'm gonna open it up to some of our panel. So, um, all right guys. Uh, so I know some of you guys have had some pressing questions here and I know we answered Rah Rakesh's earlier. Um, okay, so um, uh, I have a question from an anonymous attendee. They say, I've been a semi-professional uh, for decades, but one thing eludes me. What is the secret to getting the work in front of the editors, the art directors, et cetera, without annoying them? Talking Vogue, Elle, et cetera, G-Dub. Okay, so great question. So this is obviously one of the hardest things. Once you have that body of work, which most of us are not at that point. Most of us, especially if you're a semi-professional, I don't know, you know, G-Dub, if your portfolio is up to par, if you're ready to show it to Anna Wintour at Vogue, I don't know. 
you know? I don't know how many of you guys on this webinar right now are ready to, to like go to Anna Wintour and be like, all right, I want to shoot for Vogue magazine and she would hire you right now. I don't know how many of you guys are on here, but I would, I would imagine that most of you guys are not ready because you have to have that 40 image cohesive body of work that's high end, that's ready to go with all kinds of top tier models, production, and it looks as though you've already shot for these major, major magazines. Okay, so um, first of all, you have to have that portfolio. Then we gotta get into the marketing. Now I go over marketing, we've done a series of marketing webinars, we've also done a marketing workshop, and we're gonna go in depth about this at the Chicago workshop, August 25th through 28th, specifically about how to market you and how to get you in directly to those major magazines. In fact, at the Chicago workshop, just like in the New York workshop, we're gonna bring in the big decision makers that do this every day. So for instance, um, last year we brought in the top tier agents, literally the top one one thousandth of one percent of photographers are represented by agents. We brought in agents like Simone Friend from Friend and Johnson. We brought in David Sanchez, top uh, owner of 10 Management in Chicago. These are incredible top tier decision makers that actually represent photographers and work every day getting, getting their photographers into Vogue magazine, Vanity Fair, major ad agencies like Shiat Day, Sachi and Sachi, David Ellen, Abelson Taylor, like all these big agencies, okay? So um, that's gonna be something we're gonna go in depth with at that workshop. But I'll give you a few secrets just now. What I like to do and what has worked better than anything else is LinkedIn because everybody's on LinkedIn in the fashion industry. Everybody at every magazine, every ad agency, they're all on LinkedIn, all the brands. So I like to tackle that. I utilize um, a combination between bikini lists and agency access, which are source, um, uh, source points where I can actually pull lists, lead lists, and I do a mass upload. So at one time it allowed me to do up to, I think 40,000 at a time. Now I think you have to parse it down to like, 2,000 or 5,000 each. But what I'll do is there's a way in LinkedIn to upload my database into LinkedIn and automatically invite them. Now, if you guys, uh, if, you, if you guys are not currently connected to me, I highly recommend you connect to me on LinkedIn because I have over 20,000 contacts on LinkedIn and I have like 11,000 connections. So if you guys want to be connected, the way LinkedIn works is if you're connected to somebody that's connected to somebody, then you can connect with that person. Okay. So, and I do the ultra premium account so I can connect to anybody and I, and I am, and I'm super active. I regularly have about 1500 views a week on my LinkedIn page. So my LinkedIn is very, very active. Over 1500 people are viewing me each week and I am connected to all the big designers, all the big ad agencies, all the big magazines. So if you want to connect with them, connect with me and then connect with them. And if you have more questions on how to do that, how to word things, I can coach you on that. That's something that I do. I love to coach photographers on how to word, what to say, how to say it, how to build those relationships with those designers on LinkedIn, with those creative directors and art producers, and also photo editors at magazines, okay? You have to identify the brand, identify who the decision, maker are, uh, the decision makers are, and then we need to create a marketing strategy, get in front of those decision makers. And this is something I'm an expert at. This is what I've done my entire career. This has landed me $175,000 campaigns. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, all right, so Courtney, she says, um, Courtney uh, Bolden, I am more of a lifestyle photographer, but I am here just to learn about the fashion side of shoot. Um, I would love to know some posing and concept ideas. I love it, great question, great question. Okay, so um, uh, Courtney, one of the things with fashion and also lifestyle photography, either one, Posing is so critical. And it's one of the things that our photographers struggle with so, so, so much. Um, I, I have to say um, a lot of photographers super, super struggle with posing. A lot of times they have the model looking directly in the camera. And this doesn't work because if the model's looking in a camera, that means it's about the model. It means it's about them engaging with the audience. That's not what we want. So never have the model look at camera. I almost never, ever do. Okay, so I like to have the models look in often one direction. I often also, Courtney, I like to have the models look into the direction of where the sun is or where the light is coming from. So oftentimes I'm gonna have a light to either from one side or another, typically at about a 45 degree angle. So my light is gonna be maybe, if I'm shooting straight, you know, the, the model is where you guys are, I would be, I'd have my light off to say the right side and then I'd have it up slightly higher than them illuminating down to that beauty dish. So it's always slightly higher than their face and illuminating down. And then I'm going to have the model then facing into the light. 
Now, with posing them, I want to make sure not only they're looking in the right direction, but also with the right expression. Now, with lifestyle, it's a lot different. I'm coaching them. I'm getting them animated. I'm getting them excited. I'm getting them amped because they're creating the slice of life moment. We're creating a scene, allowing it to unfold, and then capturing it. And with fashion, it's a lot different. I'm not looking for that energy and that excitement. I'm looking for more that, that you know, those expressions of intrigue. You know, that's either elegance or we're looking at a, a something like isolation or, um, or, or maybe sadness or something solemn or there's tension and there's drama between the models. Okay, so I have all different types of emotion that can come in. So I want to coach the model into those moments. But it becomes more ethereal. It becomes more of this moment, right? And if you look at some of the work here, you can see some of, and these are all done at the workshops, the masterclass, some of the posing. You know, if you've got something like, I don't really like models sitting on chairs, but something like this, where, and I believe this was shot by Maureen Eggleton, one of our panelists at our uh, masterclass at the circus. And this was published in Photo Nostrum magazine, um, like two months ago. And this, um, you know, I was, we were able to pose the talent where one was sitting, the other one was standing with giant, huge fans blowing into them. The light was perfect on their faces. The, the hair is being blown. She, one model's looking back while the other model's looking out and creating this gorgeous moment. But it's, the model's not really looking into the camera, she's looking kind of slightly off camera. So that's what I'd recommend. Or moments like this, where it's a little bit high tension, really intense, where we shoot with the, the, um, these three models together. They're choking each other. They're creating a lot of drama, a lot of intensity. It's kind of like, whoa, what is going on? You know, or something like this, that's more timeless and classic. There's a shot at our Chicago workshop where it's, a story where he's looking out, she's looking out, they're having this moment, can't even see their eyes. Or this one right here, where the models are just, they're walking, they're strutting down. This was shot at a castle designed to be identical to King Henry VIII's palace from the 1500s um, at the New York workshop, which we're gonna have next month. So a month from now, we're gonna have the New York fashion workshop, which is our most high-end over-the-top fashion workshop of the year, which also I believe we have nine enrolled photographers, with one final spot left. So if you guys do want to do that one, there's one final spot left in New York. Let us know. We're going to be shooting with top models from the Versace campaign, models from Vogue, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar. And um, just like you see here, right? So absolutely incredible. So these kind of, these are some posing strategies that I'd recommend or something powerful. I work with this supermodel, Huda Shreta, who um, has been in Harper's Bazaar. And she, you know, has this intensity where all I had to do was say, Huda, do your thing. And Huda, because she's such a supermodel as she is, she just got into these really dramatic, intense poses, and then I just was there to capture it. Cool. Okay. So um, I, uh, I, but I would love, I would get a lot more questions on here. Um, and uh, I think that um, I, I want to get to them in a little bit but I'd really be honored to hear from some of our panelists and also feel free to ask some of the questions to our panelists as well. So um, I have uh, um, some amazing people here. I'd love to you guys to meet. Um, and uh, I, let's start, um, since I, I've been mentioning her a few times, um, I would love for um, Maureen Eggleton to jump on. Um, and uh, Maureen, um, you know, I've been talking about you and I've been, I've been you know, discussing how incredible um, you know, your photography is, and I've shown a few images uh, from it. So um, I'd love for you to, to you know, kind of take the stage here. And uh, the great Maureen Eggleton, and, and also, <laughs> um, let me also pull up uh, Maureen's spectacular website and, um, and show you guys um, what she created at our Elite Masterclass. Um, this was absolutely breathtaking. And, um, and go through her work. So Maureen, um, I would love to, um, wh why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, yourself and what you shoot and also maybe a little bit about what your experience was shooting fashion with, with me at the Elite Masterclass Photography Workshop Series. Of course. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much first and foremost to, because you invited me to this panel. I'm very excited. And it's also, um, I, I cannot say, like, I, I'm very, very, very um, I agree with you 100% about what you have told us throughout this webinar, and I feel very honored to be here. So yeah, it's it's complex and it's fantastic because it's been like I could I could say like my before and after, right? And can I tell a little bit of a story about how everything worked for me? Please do, please sure. do. 
Perfect. So I started doing portrait photography and I always been in love with portraiture, fashion and fine art. And everything, everything went very, very cool until I hit a point that I was like, okay, my portraits are cool, are good, like they have a good level, but there's a point when you are like, I need to go to the next level. This is not enough. Uh, this is this is not what is gonna put me in the you know in the top model industry and with the best stylist and with the best production. You need more than that. So I was doing my research about how to produce these photo shoots, and it's very very complex. And I found you, and one thing that was very very important to me was to see that um, for me it was important to understand that the person that I will be working for will have a good taste in art. And I knew that you have your education in fine art and fashion, which is very important. You have the technical knowledge and the taste, which is absolutely paramount. And you can, there's, there's not many people with that knowledge, right? So I was blown away by your, your work and the thing that attracted me so, so much was to see the previous work at the masterclass. It was a tribal work, fantastic, beautiful work. And what I loved about the, that production, it was a story, which, which you mentioned before in, in this webinar. And I cannot stress enough the need to a storytelling and the type of fine art involved in fashion because it's not always like, showing a brand but fashion editorial is what you just said like the story behind that and the design and the art involved in, in that type of production and if you really really want to get there you need all these elements because it's like a puzzle you need great stylist you need beautiful not only beautiful models but professional models that you you know that they are gonna they have like um uh, you know, they know how to move, they, they know their thing. So you have all these pieces that are very, very complex to get together. So I knew that after doing my research, I knew that you, you are an expert on that. And short story, I signed up with you. And I remember uh, it was for the circus theme that we, we shot at the LA Circus. And I was very, very excited because I knew that I could be focused on shooting the best photographs and you will be taking care of everything. So it was wonderful to know that I just have, have to go to, to be there and just focus on having the models, you know, what you were saying, like the, this ethereal thing, this, at the end of the day, they are like your piece of art and you want to say that story. So I enjoy it that very, very much when we were shooting the circus, we had a lot of props. Like I was blown away by, it was madness. All the props that we have available for us. You were there all the time. Uh, if I have any questions about how to pose them, if we need, you know, like um, help with the, with the sun or all these technical things, you were taking care of that. So for me, it was very, very important to do that photo shoot because that allowed me not only to have my super photos, my high level, top level fashion photographs, but it was also a learning experience. And after that, I mean, I can tell more things if, if you ask me specific questions about uh, uh, the, you know, the <laughs> Maureen, your, your work was so incredible. And let, let me just show it off because I mean, it's, it's one thing to talk about it, yeah. but it's another thing to see it. And, and to me, it's like, it's so spectacular. And you were on the Elite Masterclass, which is our most elite workshop of the year. Yeah. Which we have, um, we have this coming up in October. We shot at LA Circus, which is literally the, um, it's the, the premier spot. It's actually the premier spot in the world to source for circus props. So it was about 110 degrees that day. It was hot, <laughs> but it was, um, it was <laughs> hot. But, but, but you know, because I had a huge production team and we had um, motorhome RVs, I had like all these assistants on set. Yes. They helped with every little detail. So you didn't have to lift a finger. All you had to do was art direct to see the shoot. Exactly, exactly. And that was uh, like, that takes all the weight out of your shoulders and you can be very focused on what you want to achieve because if, even if you have a lot of people around you all the, also doing the same, I mean, 
the same environment doing the photography, each one of each photographer has a unique eye. So even if you are with another photographer, your photography is going to be unique. You choose the angle, you choose the pose, you choose, it's, it's part of your feeling is there. So yes, it's that, it's the production, it's, oh my God, the, the stylist we had was, I remember La Laura Duncan? Yeah, she styles for Vogue and Vanity Fair, and she was also Britney yeah. Spears' key stylist for 15 years on all her music videos. So exquisite taste, the exquisite taste. The styling was it, hair, makeup, the wardrobe was beautiful, ethereal, like it's, it's huge. And for me, this, uh, these photographs have become my passport, literally my passport. It's my business presentation. Obviously, it's also your personality and how you market yourself and how you market your business. But this, if you have this level of photography, this becomes your business cards every, everywhere in the world. So what is happening now with me is that I reach out to agencies. There's, there's two things that are happening. They reach out to me because they see my work. And they tell me, hey, you know, I have these models. I would love for you to come and shoot them. Wonderful, because I have models from agencies. And the other side of that is that every time I travel, I, I, I always do a fashion shoot. I go to Tokyo, to Shanghai. I have, I have had the opportunity to shoot there. However, I have to say that producing your own fashion shoots, it's very difficult. And what you just said about having the best stylist, having the best equipment, having all these things, whew, it's not easy at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's a it, it's, and it's a expensive too, right? To put it on yourself. Super expensive. Uh, other thing that you have to consider because you think, ah, it's easy. I will just reach out to the agency and I will have these models. And yeah, it, it sounds very romantic. But when you are there, when you're in Tokyo and you have to deal with other language, you have to deal with how to get the permits to, feel, to, to shoot in, in, in places because you want the place for you. You don't want to be around more people. You have to find the right stylist. You have, to, you have to do everything. So bring all these pieces together is a huge job. And yes, you can do something good. You can achieve something good. For sure, I'm not saying you cannot do it, but the level that you have, the people that you have in your belt is another level. Like, um, I'm so looking forward to keep uh, building my, my photography with you because this, uh, even though I can still do my own thing, it's important to have this strong um, portfolio each year or every two years or constantly. Because as, as I said, it's, a, it's your passport. And it's very important, for example, yeah, I was recently published in Vogue, Italy, but I was rejected before. You, sometimes you, ha you have to demonstrate that you have the, the, the taste, you have the resources. So they go and see your portfolio. And when they, say the type, when they see the type of photography you have, then say, ah, okay, she, know, she knows how she's doing. But there's a team behind you and that team it was because of you. So I really appreciate that. I, I didn't have to worry about that. And also another thing that I really, really like about the workshop is that you gave us the, the, the ability to direct and, and have our own artistic perspective about the, the, the photo shoot. Excellent. Uh, that's wonderful to hear, Maureen. And I, yeah. and I love how you mentioned it's your passport. Because it's that, your passport. That, that's exactly, I mean, when you show this imagery to any top magazine ad agency or modeling agency, it literally opens up all your doors. It's your photographic currency. And it's, yeah. like, and, and it's just so spectacular. And I know that you and I were talking about doing like the French castle experience next year. And I, I think yeah. it's going to be another massive scale production with us that is just going to blow it away. And that's why it's like, wow. Um, it's a great investment in your body work because it's really catapulted you. It is forward. an investment, especially yeah. now because uh, you, it's, we are so many photographers, many, 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 many photographers in, in, in the industry. And you don't want to be a photographer that people just uh, scroll down to see the next one. How, how are you going to stand out? You see, how are you going to be different from the others? How, where is your uniqueness? And yes, it's personality and it's how you deal with things. But because things like you said, like having the right food, the catering, the, the people that is dealing with contracts, with model releases, 
all those things are essential. And if you don't do it the right, it's like, well, just like you, this is a business also. It's not all the artistic style. There's the artistic part of it, but the business on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Maureen, thank you so much. I mean, you were, th this is just so incredible, not only for everyone to meet you and to hear your perspective, but also to see your beautiful imagery and see how far you've catapulted yourself. I'm, I'm so proud of you. And also thank guys, you. you know, please, um, I, I put up a poll about which of these photographic experiences would you be most interested in doing? Please go ahead and answer that poll. I think out of 150 people on here, you know, we've had about a third answer the poll. Please for the rest of you, go ahead and answer that. We, we'd be curious to know um, which ones you guys are most interested in. Um, please let us know, I'd, I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, and if you guys um, are uh, interested in um, doing a photographic um, strategy session, whether it's a portfolio review or a review um, some, uh, to go over your photographic business and marketing plans, please go ahead and click in the link um, that's gonna be on the side here uh, in the chat and go ahead and click, click on that. It'll set up a Zoom appointment where you'll have a personal one-on-one -on -one with somebody from our team. Um, I'd highly recommend that um, as well. So, um, all right, uh, I, um, I have a whole bunch of other questions on here too. And I'd love for, instead of me answering these, I'd actually love for some of our panelists to, uh, to, to actually answer some of these. So um, I, uh, um, let's see, I have some amazing people on here. I know I've got Adam Friedman and Eric Michael Clark and Brad Derry. I've got a lot of other, um, I've got some incredible um, uh, panelists uh, to talk to today about their photography. Um, Adam, why don't you uh, answer this one? Um, the great Adam Friedman here. Um, Adam is a, uh, a top fashion and advertising photographer located in Washington, DC. Um, extremely talented photographer. Um, and uh, I, um, I, I have some questions here from some of the photographers that are on here. And um, I, uh, um, okay, uh, here's a good one. Um, so uh, from a uh, anonymous, um, or I, I, I like this one from an anonymous attendee. How would you approach marketing during this time where most creative directors and editors are working from home? Print mailers were the go for me, but now I have to pivot, likely because obviously their offices, they're not getting them at their offices. What do you feel is a new way of gaining an intro? Do you have any good uh, suggestion on that, Adam? Sure. Uh, one of the things that I've done, uh, Kevin, you and I have worked on it together, is to take the opportunity while we can't do some of the marketing we're doing that was generating uh, new business for us to revamp some of the marketing and get ready for when uh, the opportunities arise again. So going through your website, updating your website with current material, uh, building and getting your new promo pieces ready to go so that, that when you, you can start reaching out to people and actually getting them again, those pieces are ready to go. Um, direct email doesn't always work great, but people are sitting at home right now and they're bored. Uh, so I've gotten good responses from sending direct uh, email pieces. Um, you don't have their home addresses, so you're not going to be sending them uh, things from home. And if you know and have a relationship with current Clients, art directors, art buyers, uh, agents, uh, ad houses, uh, marketing companies, anybody that you currently work with, uh, those are the people you should be contacting because you most likely you've got their cell phone numbers. So taking a few minutes to reach out to those people, and it can be something as simple as, hey, just checking in with you. It could be a text or a phone call. Just checking in and see how your family's doing just to say hi. You want to keep those relationships going. Um, they're probably not going to have new opportunities for you right at this minute. Uh, but they may have some new opportunities that they were starting to develop that when they start thinking about hiring somebody, you're going to be the person they go to. It's also a great time to start focusing on your photographic currency, your, your, your creative side. Uh, one of the things I love to do is produce and direct and, and Kevin and I have worked together on that. And, you know, one of, one of the ways the industry's changed when I got into this industry, you got hired by an advertising agency, um, or a producer would hire you, they'd pretty much have in mind what they wanted you to do. They had an idea for the shoot already. Uh, now I'm getting calls for something that's kind of come out of the, the movie or TV or commercial industry, which is they're asking for treatments. Um, and treatments are basically, they're asking you for what your idea would be. They might call you up and say, if it's Levi's, they'll call you up and say, hey, we got these new jeans coming out and this is the kind of clientele or market it's going to reach out to. This is the age bracket. What do you think? And they're going to ask you to develop uh, 
a photographic or video campaign around it. They're going to ask you for what your opinions are. So you're included in a lot more now than you ever were included in the past, but they're also expecting you to be able to deliver more than just photos. I mean, one of the, one of the questions I get a lot is, um, Hey, it must, or statements I get a lot is, Oh man, I'd love to work with a camera in my hand all the time. The truth is I probably have a camera in my hand, maybe 10, 10% of the time. The rest of the time is doing the marketing, uh, doing the budgeting, reaching out to the clients, uh, casting talent, um, building teams. Uh, I think Kevin touched on it. Uh, this is another good thing to do in your downtime, build your team. Uh, because there are a whole lot of assistants. There are a whole lot of hairstylists. There are a whole lot of uh, 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 regular fashion stylists. There are a whole lot of all kinds of people out there right now who aren't doing anything in their board. Um, and they'll be happy to talk to you, especially creatives. We, we don't shut up. We love to talk to people about what we do. So uh, you... Oh, we lost all kinds of Sorry about that. <laughs> When somebody calls you in the middle of a Zoom thing, uh, we, you can you can kind of really get into all kinds of uh, practices and good habits that you may not have been in before. Um, I hope that kind of answered the question with a little bit extra. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. That's a good answer. So, Adam, um, you have attended the Dallas workshop with me. You attended the mm -hmm. New York workshop. You then attended the New York workshop again uh, last right. year. Um, you then came to the Elite Masterclass with me, where we shot with the parachute. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, uh, I, I just want to point this out and I know you're a modest guy, but Adam Friedman, after attending the elite masterclass in November, he ended up winning top 10 fashion photographer of the year in the one Island awards from what he shot at the elite masterclass photography workshop series. So yeah. I am so proud of this, Adam, and this is a big deal in the fashion industry to win an award like this with a spread of images, we shot in a water studio, at Reese's Pieces with parachutes and top models that have been in vogue. So Adam, like this, this is really a game changer and I can't yeah. wait to see your new fashion body of work. Yeah, this, work this, this was an epic shoot. It was, it was, it was definitely an epic shoot. Uh, it, it was, it was, uh, and I appreciated working with you on this one because it was the first time when that, that you, uh, you and you and I are working together um, that I got to be a, a part of the production and help with the creative side of it, which was a lot of fun. Uh, doing the behind the scenes work. I know a lot of people who come to the workshops are, are very focused on getting the camera in their hand and, and, and shooting these epic images. Um, and they're there. You, you, there's no way you're not gonna leave with a portfolio that's a billion times better than anything you've got right now. Uh, but the opportunity to work behind the scenes uh, in the development of the, of the shoots and, and getting to know the integral parts of how to put on a production like this I would say that was every bit as valuable to me as the images that came out of it. If that makes sense. So Adam, uh, when you're talking about the behind the scenes, you're talking about like the, the coming up with the concepts and the ideas. Yep. This one, I remember you had the idea. You're like, hey, I want to shoot a Wiese's pieces. I want to shoot with this epic water studio. I want to shoot with parachutes. I want to shoot. I mean, right. We had very specific things. And it wasn't just you. There was also a yeah. few other wonderful photographers um, like Terry Moy, Robert Ashby, and Steve yeah. uh, Rubnitz that got involved. But um, talk about that, the kind of the process well, of it, developing the inspiration it, boards and then putting it, it into fruition. It, it was funny because I, I think I, I, I was actually uh, teaching a class. I teach photography too. And I, I was teaching for uh, a major camera company at a photo show. And I saw an image it was an okay image, it, 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 but the concept was there. The, the idea the person had when they were doing it was a good idea. And it kind of inspired me to, to remember a shoot that I've been planning for years, which is doing some things with parachutes. And um, you and I were talking on the phone and I sent you a, a series of just okay images that I'd seen and said, hey, what do you think if, if we had something like this, but we took it to that next level and we did this, 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 and this, and, and, and twist it around. I said, and we should do it at Wheezy's Pieces. And man, you actually jumped in your car and drove an hour and a half out to that studio, called me from the studio and said, oh, I just booked it. <laughs> so, so that was, that was pretty epic. Um, but the, you know, going back and forth with you and seeing where you would say something like, yeah, this is a good idea, but for the fashion world, we really want more like this. And, you know, we started talking about outfits and, and all the things that it would take to, to take this, to take this concept and from the idea of a concept and actually bring it to life. Um, and, and make it actually appear the way that we thought about it. And, and then also, you know, you're dealing with a parachute that can, 
it carries human beings. So the logistics of having to tie that thing down, I mean, these things can pick up two or 3,000 pounds. Uh, and I think Valena probably weighs 130 or 110. So, you know, if that thing had caught her, uh, we might not have found her. She might have, we might have found her in a couple <laughs> of states over. <laughs> so, probably true. Probably yeah. true. But um, it, getting, getting involved in, in that behind the scenes and uh, working with you on building the, the actual entire shoot, understanding, you know, from A to Z, we had to find the right style. It's not just a stylist. It's a stylist. You know, people will say to photographers, um, you know, back in the day when I started, there were a lot of jack of all trades, a lot of photographers who would do just about anything. They'd, they'd shoot, they'd shoot, I don't know, they'd shoot weddings, they'd shoot corporate, they'd shoot whatever somebody wanted to hire them for, they would just go do it. Uh, now, if you're not a specialist, you're probably not going to get hired. If they don't see in the first five images on your website exactly what they're looking for, they're moving on to the next person because they want to drop this, this, this $500,000 budget on you and know that, that you can take it and deliver exactly what they're looking for. They're not looking for stress when they're going to hire somebody. Um, and in talking to you, we, 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 you know, talking about stylists, stylists are the same. You know, not every stylist could style the shoot. We needed a high fashion stylist not a lifestyle stylist mm -hmm. and not a fitness stylist and not a swimwear stylist or resort stylist. We need, or not a food stylist. I mean, yeah, finding you, you went out and found, uh, you know, the, the, the two amazing stylists, I think to style that shoe. Um, I, th I think that red dress was, what was that? A $25,000 dress. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah. Was insane. And, and then look at what you shot in, in, at the other one. So this is in New York and then also at the Dallas fashion workshop with, um, with the airplane you shot with c-130s and yeah that's uh, cool this is spectacular and this is you know a lot of you guys you know that are on this webinar right now you don't always live in la or new york and you know we're able to do stuff like this even in places like dallas or denver colorado you know or napa valley or atlanta georgia or, or dallas texas you know we have them at workshops in all these different cities and we can make this epic production happen but it just takes the right connections and production yeah. so um, excellent. And Adam, do you have of all those moments and all those massive productions with me? What was the what was the most exciting one? What was the most the workshop that just got you completely like amped? Um, probably the masterclass. Although although New York New York's pretty epic. I mean, they're they're I, 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 it's kind of hard to put one over the other. I would say the masterclass from the perspective of I was more involved in in building the, the, the idea for the shoot. Um, but at the same time, that New York one, that, that's the reason I went to that twice is I, I always feel like when I leave there, even though it's, it's amazing <laughs> what, what I leave with, I always feel like there's something else I could have shot there. I mean, that, that place is and that, that, that shoot is always epic, you know? Uh, so I would probably say those two were kind of stand out. Um, but if you have maybe pick one, I'm going to tell you the masterclass. Yeah, yeah, yeah ab absolutely. And that's our most elite workshop of the year. Um, yeah. You know, we, we typically have photographers take at least one or two main section workshops first before coming to that one. So Adam had taken yeah. like New York twice and, uh, and the um, uh, Dallas workshop and then he attended that one. Um, and it yeah. was kind of build up to that because we have seven of the biggest decision makers in LA um, as, as panelists uh, at that workshop. So we yep. had big time photography agents, which that's the next step I see for you, Adam, is getting yep. represented by a top photography rep. Um, I think that's, that's key. Also guys, um, please uh, you know, answer the poll. I'd love to hear your perspectives on um, some of these polls that we're putting out. Um, I'd love to hear that and um, to see kind of where you guys stand, you know, how likely if you guys are interested at all in taking a workshop and if so, how likely. Um, also, um, please put in the, um, you know, in the chat, I know many of you, we have a whole bunch of um, uh, people that just set up some amazing um, photographic reviews with our staff. Um, and I know uh, Maureen and Adam, you guys have both worked with our um, uh, photographic consultants before. And you have some good experiences. So, um, you know, t tell us a little bit about that, Adam, as far as like working with our photographic consultants and like, you know, kind of how that helped you, um, you know, with your portfolio and kind of the next steps and stuff. Yeah, I, I've worked with Ivan for a couple of years now. And, and one of the really interesting things about him is that he's, he's a kind of a taskmaster. Um, he's very good at, you know, you, you will get a phone call from him that says, hey, um, how are those images coming along? Uh, have you called through them yet? Have you, have you, have you started editing yet? Uh, or if you use a retoucher, um, oh, sorry, the light's getting bad where I am right now. Uh, if you use a retoucher, um, 
Uh, have you gotten them to the retoucher yet? Uh, having somebody when you're going through the process uh, to be a sounding board is, is, is excellent also. And, and Ivan's very good at that. Uh, he's a good listener. Um, you know, so he, he's, he's also good at, at, at holding you accountable for, for what you've committed to do for yourself. You know, a lot of, I'll tell you the one thing about photographers is we all at times, uh, forget that we're running a business. Um, and you have to be a business person first. I think Kevin, you said it early. Photographers love gear. They're gear junkies. Um, I have very little equipment that I own. I tend to rent what I need. Uh, and what I do own, I do the same thing you do. It's, it's, in, the, it's in a company that I, I rent to myself when I use it. But the equipment is, is unimportant. I, I've never met a art buyer, art director. I've never met anybody in this industry that was hiring a photographer that asked me what kind of camera I use. Not once. Um, and that's in over 20 years. Not one time has that ever happened. Nobody's ever cared. Um, what they want to know is, can you deliver the imagery? So when you get, you get too caught up in the, in the, in the, in the BS, you know, it's, it's, you find yourself forgetting that you're a business person. You can't waste money. Um, you, you can't say the one of the things that irritates me more than anything. And, and, and uh, I'm sure I've, Ivan and I have talked about this a million times. One of the things that drives me crazy is when I hear a photographer say, I wouldn't spend money on a workshop guys. I could buy a lens for that amount of money. I'm like, yeah, but you can't take that lens and show it to an art director and art buyer and get a job. <laughs> no piece of camera equipment has ever gotten you a job. You know, your, 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 your camera bag is not full of photographic currency. It's going to do nothing for you <laughs> to be perfectly clear. The only thing's going to do anything for you is when you can show somebody work that you've done uh, with that equipment. So, you know, a, a, anytime I hear somebody make a statement like that, I kind of, I kind of cringe a little bit and I'm like, yeah, your priorities are real messed up. Um, you know, I hear people say, they'll, they'll ask me what I spend a month on marketing and I tell them and they're like, wow, um, you know, for that amount of money, you could buy lighting and cameras and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, yeah, like I said before, every dollar I spend on marketing returns me $2 or $10 or a hundred dollars. Every dollar I spend on a piece of camera equipment returns me nothing. It's a depreciating asset. You know, it's like buying a car, you know, you can buy a $50,000 or a hundred thousand dollar car, but the day you drive it off the lot, it's worth 40, you know? Um, so where's more important to put your money in? Uh, so it's, it's so much it's, wisdom, it's, Adam, that, that everything you just said there, that's one of the yeah. golden rules. And I hope that each and every one of these photographers listening, takes away something special from that because Adam, you're a brilliant businessman. And that's why I appreciate you're it. So successful, you know, in photography and in business, you've been able to, I mean, you're, you're, you know, such an incredible, powerful, you know, um, photographer. You have me prepared. I mean, going into this pandemic, nobody could have seen this coming, but not owing anybody any money is different than having tons of debt and going into something like this. So I've got friends of mine who I'm watching right now, they're struggling. Um, and they're, they're real talented and real famous, which I'm not, I'm not going to use their names, but they're struggling because they had piles of debt. You know, when, when you go into something like this, you don't have any debt. You don't have any, you don't have all those other burdens standing over you because you haven't gone and spent money on things you shouldn't have been spending money on. Um, then, then you, you're coming out of things like this, or even if you're just in a slump, you know, uh, I know some photographers who, who were on top of the world and Kevin, I know, you know, guys like this guys are on top of the world. And then later, um, they weren't because their style, they, they shot one very specific style. They didn't really kind of update their look and their, their, what they were shooting and the style they were shooting kind of, it kind of became, you know, past, not present. And they didn't want to update anything, any, anything about themselves. So, you know, I'd rather invest in updating my book and creating and sharpening my skills, um, you know, learning you know, how many, how many photographers don't understand video right now? And I can tell you, if you're not willing to do video, you're going to have a problem uh, because every client I have wants video and they don't want the behind the scenes video of the photographer shooting the shoot. They want behind the scenes video of the model doing their thing and the clothes being shown off and, and all the kind of, all the kind of cool stuff that you can see happening. They, um, you know, it's, it's really important to keep, pushing your skills and learning new things all the time. And, and if you equate that to buying equipment, it, your, your priorities are just real off base. And, and you know, you just made a, a really good point about what to allocate your financing on and that's for marketing, for portfolio investment, for education. So I want to ask a poll right now, guys, 
Um, how much uh, do you guys spend per year? And um, be honest, be honest about it. Now, what you spend per year is probably vastly different than what you should be spending. <laughs> I mean, I, I would highly recommend that, you know, really as a photographer, you shouldn't be wasting your money on equipment or studios or other overhead uh, or staff. You should be investing a huge amount of money in your marketing, your portfolio, your portfolio development, workshops, et cetera. Um, that's where going to be the best bang for your buck. And that's why Maureen, right. and Adam and Eric and the other attendees here are talk, discussing. Yeah. I don't think I don't think most photographers understand what a studio is. Not not to jump in on you, Kevin, but you know mm -hmm. when you own a studio, like we own one here in D.C., that's a separate business. It's not part of my photography business. Yes. It's a rental studio that we rent out, that we make. A, it's a profit center on its own, and if it ever becomes unprofitable, we won't own it. Yep. Um, it's it's not there. We when we built it, um, it was not our intention to shoot there or to bring clients there or to make it a work center for ourselves. We built it because we saw a need in DC going, Hey, there's no studio rental studios for photographers here. Let's open one. It's no, no different than opening a gym. Right. Um, but if you're going to open a studio as a photographer thinking you're going to be doing all your work there, uh, you, you're, you might, you might want to move to LA and just become a headshot photographer um, and put a little studio in your house uh, and just do um, actor, actress headshots. Cause that's the only type of photographer or, or if you're taking pictures of real estate agents for their business card uh you know maybe maybe you could buy a backdrop and put it in your garage or something but yeah kevin's dead on you don't need a studio to run your business as a matter of fact i think studios personally take away from your creativity um i think you start to count on that and you start to think you have to build sets and do all this stuff and if you just get out of your your element like that the uh, la circus i mean you can't build that in a studio uh, <laughs> yeah. Weezy's pieces, yeah, you're, you're not building. You guys that. are location <laughs> photographers, and I'm the same way. Yeah. Location is so yeah. much more interesting. You I, get I, me on location, and I'm happy. You stick me in a studio, and I start bouncing off walls. Well, Adam, I, I really appreciate that, man. You, get, you yeah. just gave some incredible advice. And, um, and, and I want to answer a few more questions here, because I've got some really good questions. Um, and I'm also, uh, I'm, I'm going to put this, um, if you guys have any further questions after this webinar, I want you to also, uh, you can ask your, our photographic consultants, or if you need me on particularly, you can um, set up a, um, a Zoom Calendly appointment there in the link. Um, I, I'm going to answer a question from Diego Hugo. Um, you say, are you teaching um, any lighting techniques, posing, and interaction with the talent in the classes? Literally, that's what we teach. At the workshop, you're, we're going to go in-depth on, um, first of all, business and marketing strategies, how to maximize profitability, how to take your photography to the next level, how to connect with decision makers. We're going to even bring in photographic decision makers like art buyers from ad agencies, creative directors from ad agencies, photo editors. We've had photo editors from Wonderland Magazine, Flaunt, Cosmopolitan, big time fashion magazines, um, Emmy Magazine, etc. And we're going to be giving you the opportunity to meet them, connect with them, build rapport, and potentially work with them which is fantastic. Like they were just, Maureen and Adam attended our Elite Masterclass and also um, Eric Michael Clark has as well, who is um, on here as well. Um, so uh, you guys all had that amazing experience and I, um, I look forward to seeing you guys again there. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we, during the actual shoot days, 110%, Diego, we go in depth about lighting techniques and strategies, how to light, just like I was discussing earlier, how we lit that really sophisticated scene inside the Palmer house or how we, um, specifically light a scene um, like here. These are all epic imagery um, that, you know, shot on location at these incredible um, uh, workshops. Uh, so absolutely lighting. And then most importantly, posing. That I would say, and I'm sure Adam and Maureen and Eric could all attest is probably my absolute specialty. More than anything else, even though lighting has always been my baby, I have to say the biggest thing that I bring to the table is posing in art direction unlike anyone else I know. I am the, that is my absolute like gift is be able to pose and art direct scenes and stories. That is what I am best at, both lifestyle and fashion and swim um, in creating epic massive scale production stories. That's what I can help you with. And I can work with you personally to make sure that your stories are absolutely amazing. And also I make sure that you don't leave the workshop until you've shot the greatest images of your lifetime. And even Adam Friedman, who shoots like 30 advertising jobs a month, he shot the greatest images of his lifetime at the workshop. He did. No, I'd agree with that. Yeah. And, and so did Maureen Eggleton. And you got to see her photographic currency. So did Eric Michael Clark, who's on here as well. And I want him to jump on here next. Um, I, you know, we uh, have worked with these photographers and they shot the greatest photography of their lifetime because of the production value. 
You know, it's because we gave them the opportunity and we worked personally with them to make sure that they're gonna shoot the greatest images. And they weren't the best images of their life. I make them go back and shoot it again. I work with them, I take them under my wing until they get it right, absolutely. So that's absolutely um, critical. So uh, definitely guys. Um, and um, also, so thank you for answering that question about what's your budget for marketing. That's really helpful to know. Marketing, also portfolio development, workshops, et cetera. Um, I'm gonna share the results here right now. Um, and also remember to, if you guys haven't already, uh, set up a photographic consult with somebody on our team. I'd love to give you that opportunity because we are offering that. And if you guys are interested in any epic photographic workshop in 2020 or 2021, we are offering a $500 discount for anybody who wants to, to attend any of our workshops, even though they're almost all sold out this year. Miami sold out. Chicago only has one spot left. New York only has one spot left. Those will be completely sold out by the, by the end of today. Um, and then, um, and then the, uh, I think there's a spot in Napa and then there's maybe one or two, uh, there's two spots in Napa and I think one in um, the masterclass. So if you guys want to do those, or if you want to schedule one for 2021, our workshops go up about $500 each year. So if you enrolled in any 2021 workshop today, um, you'd actually get to save a thousand dollars off any 2021 workshop because it's $500 less for 2020 pricing for a 2021 workshop. And we're offering a $500 discount off of um, any of the enrollments uh, that, from people that attend this webinar. So that's a huge savings and it would be a really, really great opportunity for each and every one of you if you are on the fence or considering taking one of our epic workshops. So that's for a four day epic experience. So um, I, uh, before I get to the great Eric Michael Clark, I wanted to make an announcement. This is something that I haven't discussed yet um, really. And, um, but basically um, instead for me of wasting my money on equipment that I don't need, studios that I don't need. I invested it in my marketing, my business, and then also um, property. So I actually uh, just bought a, um, a 46 room castle in France. And we are now announcing our epic French experience where we're going to be having a five day photographic workshop on location at this 46 room castle. Um, that uh, um, I am uh, that I just have acquired, and you're going to actually have an opportunity to stay at the castle. Um, we're going to be shooting with top tier supermodels from Paris and top tier celebrity uh, fashion stylists that, that style for Vogue and Vanity Fair, hair and makeup artists as well. And we're going to be shooting for four solid production days on location at the castle. Um, and uh, so it includes, unlike any of our other workshops, this one actually does include room and board. So you get to stay at the castle and we're gonna have a Michelin star chef on site. You're also gonna have a masseuse on site. There's actually a massage room in the castle. Um, we have a, um, two um, uh, wine cellars. We actually have our own branded wine at the castle and we're gonna do, be doing massive scale fashion production with like uh, elegant carriages. We're gonna be photographing um, with top tier epic wardrobe. Uh, these are just different um, views, vistas from the castle. This is a 13th century castle. Um, this is the front of the castle, front lawn. It's on 12 acres. And, um, and it is absolutely spectacular. And this is what it looks like in the autumn. So uh, just to give you guys a preface of that, um, and uh, we're going to be using it also, I mean, I'm using it as a photographic and filming location because um, there's a lot of incredible um, period pieces that are going on right now. And um, I'm going to be using it for um, a filming location, a photographic location, um, and also an epic workshop um, destination experience. So if you guys are interested, um, let me know about this. This is something we're literally just announcing today. Um, and we're going to have two sections of it in August uh, 2021. So it'll be a year from now. Um, and uh, we're going to be shooting with world-class top supermodels on location at the castle. Um, so it'll be a four massive scale fashion shoots while you're there. So it's going to be a really, really spectacular experience. So if you guys are interested in this, let us know. And um, this is something, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be a one-of-a-kind experience. No one else in the world offers anything like this. Um, so I, uh, I'd look forward um, to it. So anyway, uh, guys, if you guys um, uh, have any more questions on that or are interested, um, I uh, we would love to hear them. Um, we have 46 questions here. So if I don't answer your question during this webinar, um, I'd love to set up a consult with you guys after the webinar to go over this. Um, and please go ahead and set up a consult with us and we can answer any of your questions um, if we don't get to that. So, um, okay, uh, let's see. I have, um, 
uh, some more questions I want to get to, and I actually had love for Eric Michael Clark to answer some of these as well. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm gonna I'll answer one, and then I'm gonna bring Eric on. Um, okay. So uh, Alexis Rosario asks, "How do I find a photo agent, and who can find me more opportunities related to fashion photography?" It's a great question. Um, so a photo agent, that's actually something we go in depth about at the actual photographic workshop. We're going to talk about that at the Chicago workshop and at the New York workshop, specifically because we're going to have agents there. We're going to have actual photography reps there. They're going to there be there to talk to you personally, Alexis, about how to obtain an agent, how to actually get an agent. So we're going to talk, we're going to have them and you can ask them directly how to do that. Now, um, to find a photo agent, uh, there are, uh, it's very easy to find uh, who the agents are. I use a website called um, theagentlist.com. This actually shows all photography agents in the world. Um, there's about, I think about 600 listed on here. Only about maybe 350 or 400 are actually photography agents. A lot of them are also, they represent stylists or other things. Um, and then of those, um, you know, I would say maybe 250 of them are in America. Okay, so if you're, you're looking at only say 250 agents in America, and how many photographers are in America? How many milli literally millions of photographers are in America? So you're talking like, and each, each agent only represents between two to like eight photographers. So you're talking like the, the one one thousandth of 1% of photographers, or maybe even one ten thousandth of 1% of photographers are represented by an agent. So only the creme de la creme de la creme de la creme are represented by an agent. So remember, because this is more difficult to get an agent than it is to become a professional athlete, we gotta look at it as such. And what they're looking for is, we, first of all, you want to find, depending on what type of um, photography you do, you want to find an agent that works well with you. By the way, this agent right here, 46 pictures. Um, this agent, Jay Foster, he was our panelist at the last workshop three weeks ago in Newport Beach. So our photographers got to meet him personally, which was fabulous. Um, so uh, you can look through here and find all the different agents and you can even keyword it by city. So for instance, you know, look up Los Angeles, these are all the agents in Los Angeles. Um, you know, you can look up New York. Obviously, the majority of them are in New York, 245 listed in New York. A lot of them are located in multiple cities. Um, but, uh, that, but getting an agent is tough, uh, especially for fashion. Typically, what they're going to be looking for is how much you're billing per year. So if you can prove that, like, man, I am a sought-out photographer, and I'm making at least a half million dollars a year as a photographer, they're going to be more likely to consider you. Consider you, maybe not represent you. If you're making under that amount, it's going to be pretty tough. Um, they're not going to represent you based upon how good your pictures are. It doesn't really have much to do with how good your pictures are. It has a lot more to do with how much you're billing per year, how sought after you are, and how well they think that they can market you to their audience of art buyers and creative directors that they're currently working with. And also, if you have some in-house clients that they want to take up, they want to, you know, basically jump on, 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 on your, you know, um, on your wagon and try to like ride that wave of big clients, uh, they're going to try to do that as well. So I'd recommend getting an agent because I've had four different agents in my career and it definitely helped me. Um, but uh, it's definitely not easy. Um, so I have kind of a tried and true method of how I obtain representation that I go in depth. It's got a long process, but I go in depth about this at that workshop in Chicago. Um, we talk about it in New York as well. And it's something that um, I would love for you to come and join us because it's something that we're going to get really, really in depth about how to actually get to the point of representation and obtaining an agent to represent you to catapult you to that highest level, give you that gravitas. Okay. So, um, all right, guys. And, uh, and if you guys did want to set up a consult, please uh, click that link in the chat. Um, Eric, I'd like to bring on the great Eric Michael Clark. So Eric is, um, he's an incredibly talented photographer. Um, he's one of my favorite people I've had a chance to work with in the last 11 years of directing these workshops. I've worked with you for goodness, like it's been six years, maybe? Something like that? 2014, yeah, yeah six, so years. six years. So I've been working with Eric for six years. Um, he's taken, I don't know, maybe 10 workshops, nine or 10 workshops nine, or so. Nine, nine with a couple of one-on-ones, two, two one-on-ones. Excellent. And Eric, um, Eric has shot just mind blowing. And, and it was interesting because Eric is one of the younger photographers. He's more on the younger end that I've had a chance to work with, but he's smart because instead of just spending the money on more college to study photography, he's like, you know what? I really need the portfolio. I really need to, the, 
the, you know, the, the, the access to the top models and the production and, the, and let me invest in that. So he started off really young. I mean, I don't even know. You were like in your early 20s when you started with me. And 24. Yeah, you're 24. And, it, and I think that's a brilliant time because over the years, you've developed this body of work that is just absolutely spectacular. So, I mean, I, I get really excited. And Eric specifically, even though you've been to fashion workshops, you've been to lifestyle workshops, you know, I know that you do have a passion for lifestyle and pharmaceutical and stuff like that. Um, and, um, and then, but I'm able, am I able to see your fashion work on your website, Eric? Um, if you go to ericmichaelclark.com, I don't know if there's a lot of fashion on there. Uh, it's mostly, uh -huh. it's mostly lifestyle stuff. Uh-huh. But that's what you want to market yourself to, which is smart. Right. Which is smart. So here, now this is, um, but I know you've been to fashion workshops because you've yeah. been to master class and you've done some epic stuff. You went, came to the one at the equestrian center, the U.S. Olympic training facility for equestrian with that. In Malibu. Workshop. Yeah, that was um, cool. But yeah, these were uh, some epic images you shot at the lifestyle workshops from Miami Beach to um, Hermosa Beach to um, uh, Chicago. And, um, and you created some incredible content here. So amazing. I mean, really beautiful work. Very in that like health and wellness, pharma, you know, incredible content. And, um, and, I, and I love this. Wow, these are from like your one-on-one -on -one here. Yeah, that was and a good day. Incredible stuff, Eric. So talk to us about it. Tell us about like, you know, what, um, you know, I guess how it shifted your photography, kind of how you saw photography what you gained from actually attaining, uh, you know, attending the workshops and kind of how that, you know, transformed your career. Uh, so I went to college for, for photography. I have my bachelor's degree in it. And, you know, after I was done with all that, you know, I knew, I knew that there was so much more to this industry that I wanted to learn, needed to learn to become successful. And with the degree, I was like a, an amazing fine art photographer but you like it's so hard to market yourself to people that are real willing to hire you and give you money for the, your services if you just have fine art images in your portfolio um you know i got turned down for projects time and time again because i had these really cool like pieces that you would like print and hang up in your living room but nothing that like the clients actually wanted for their projects um, and that's one really important skill that I learned from the, the workshops is like having portfolio specific or client specific portfolios that showcase only what they want to see. So you don't want to have, you know, a Jack of all trades website where you have food and weddings and cars and product and events all on the same website. You know, you, you want to direct people to um, your work. That's only what they need. That way they see, Oh, you know, um, you know, John Smith is this great, great photographer and he does all this work and he does all these things, but Eric only shoots the stuff that we want. So we're going to go with Eric because we know that he'll do the job that we need done. And then one other great takeaway that I got from, from Kevin is, you know, shooting what the client wants, but then sneaking in your own ideas, your own, your own like methodology to things and delivering things to them that they didn't even know they wanted. Because that gives them that wow moment. You know, you want the clients to have that wow moment. Because then, you know, that's what brings you back to that client again. And they hire you for other projects. They, you know, they love working with you. They, you know, they send you Christmas cards and, and stuff like that. Um, so those are some of the big, the big moments from, from the workshops. And I, like he said, I knew that I needed more to learn, but I didn't want to further my collegiate education. I didn't want to like have a master's in photography because I knew that that would only get me so far. Like I'd be able to teach photography, but I didn't want to really want to teach. I wanted to, you know, have a successful career. Um, and learning what I learned from the workshops definitely led me down that path. Excellent. Excellent. So, and, yeah. You know, I, I see people asking a lot of questions and I've, I've been trying to get to them through through typing um but there's well, some stuff in here. It. eric you answered a whole bunch of these questions which is yeah. really hopefully hopefully i did a good job answering them you know i did the best i could oh you're uh, fantastic you're fantastic yeah. um so uh yeah i mean let's answer another one um all right so uh let's see um uh all right so eric um 
now, have you, first of all, I know you've done a bunch of workshops with me, um, but uh, were you able to, um, uh, do you have any interest in also doing some of the video side of it? Because, you know, that's something that like, or do you want to stay strictly photography? You know, I've, I, I get asked all the time by clients to do video work. Um, and then when I, when I, when I am asked, I ask, you know, I, I return with the question, well, do you want to increase the budget? You know, cause they're asking for more service and you know, nine times out of 10, they say, yeah, cause we want more stuff out of you. It's like, okay, well then let me bring someone on to do that. That way I can focus on what I do best, which is the still photography aspect of the project. And I have someone else there that specializes in video and they're doing a better job than I would do doing video for the client. And then that's the, that, again, that's the wow moment. It's like, wow, you know, these, these, the video looks so good and the pictures look so good instead of having, you know, amazing pictures with mediocre video or mediocre video uh, or some, sorry, okay. great, great video or mediocre stills. Right. Um, right you know, right. so you have the best of both and it's so hard to, I find it's so hard to be the best of both. You know, I, I get it. I get it. So that's yeah. you're specialize in photography. So, okay. So I have a question and I'm going to answer this one. This is from um, Robert Patrick Winston. He says, I live in Malibu and I'm looking for models to shoot with to build my portfolio. What is the best way to get connected with models? And if I do not have a large overhead um, and can only shoot TFP, what path is the best way to build my portfolio? Thank you for this awesome Zoom conference. Okay. So Robert, um, first of all, thanks for staying on. I know we've been on for a while, um, but uh, I, I really appreciate those of you guys who are still on because I, you're getting the most, the best nuggets and the best secrets from our photography panelists and also um, that I can give you as well. So Robert, um, so one of the things is uh, if you can meet with the modeling agencies personally, that's always the best. Obviously during COVID, that's not gonna happen. Um, but that's generally the best way is to like set up an appointment. If you have an epic portfolio, if you already have a world-class portfolio, that helps. If you don't, it's gonna be a little harder. Because like I mentioned earlier, the modeling agencies aren't going to take you seriously. If you don't have a world-class A-list portfolio uh, or you shoot something other than massive scale, high production fashion photography, they're not really going to be interested in working with you. Or they might send you their lowest end model um, new faces, which is not really going to benefit you. Maybe just to practice, but it's not going to benefit your portfolio. So Robert, what I highly, highly recommend is um, the best way to get in touch with those big agencies is to have that A-list body of work. And say you attended, I know you're in um, Malibu. If you're able to attend one of our California workshops or even come to New York, um, but we have our, um, we have two California workshops coming up in October. Um, and if you could attend one of those and shoot with top tier supermodels and have that body of work at a four day workshop and walk away with a 40 image epic body of work from a four day workshop and then go to those modeling agencies, you'll be able to shoot anyone you want. You literally could go into Elite, Wilhelmina, Next, Vision, Ford, IMG, any major agency, and they'll open their doors to you. But the thing is, it's a chicken or the egg thing. They're not interested in you if you don't already have that epic body of work from the top tier models in your book. But how do you get the top tier models in your book if, you know, no one's going to work with you? So that's kind of the chicken or the egg thing. It's so tough. you can try, but it's going to be hard and it's going to be very expensive if you want to do it right. Because remember, you also have to have the styling, top tier fashion stylists, hairstyles, makeup artists, craft services, meaning the food, the equipment, the locations, the permits, all of that stuff. That's going to be all part of it. So I would recommend, Robert, if you can attend one of our workshops, it will completely catapult you going forward. So hopefully you'd set up a, um, a Zoom consult with, um, with our team. Uh, and uh, if you haven't already, Robert, I'd really like to talk with you personally about this. Um, I would even be happy to get on personally and talk with you um, about that specific thing because that's something that I have a lot of experience with, obviously. Uh, so um, I, uh, but anyway, please go ahead and uh, set up an appointment if you haven't already. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Um, Love to answer a few more questions. And then uh, in addition, um, Eric, and then I, I also we're gonna bring on our, some of our team members, uh, some, some of our photographic consultants. Um, okay, so I have from James Hickey, what, are the, what is the current preferred method of sharing your book, your portfolio with agencies? I know the iPad died quick and it seems, um, uh, it seems printer books came back, but what's going uh, today? I do 11 by 14 printed books. 
So James, I would say 11 by 14 printed books is definitely a, a good way to go. I would highly recommend that, James. I think that's smart. I have 11 by 14 books. Um, I have um, uh, I have metal books. I have like a brushed metal lifestyle portfolio, and I also have a, um, a blue suede portfolio. In fact, uh, I'll show you my original book. This one's a little bit different than 11 by 14. It's 20 by 20, um, but uh, it's a blue suede portfolio and um and it has you know the images posted like that so um this is one method um also having a handmade book binder make one and like 11 by 14 something like this um this is another method or um a metal portfolio and i know eric has a pretty incredible portfolio. i don't know eric is yours is yours handy uh oof, no and this is another one this is uh, my lifestyle portfolio and 11 by 14. So um, th that's what I'd recommend is having a, an epic portfolio that is, um, and I'd have a few different copies of it so that you can, you know, if, if you do need to send one or you need to bring it by, but normally you want to accompany a portfolio. iPads are handy just to have an extra backup in case you need something that's not currently in your book to show them. Uh, but I wouldn't show up with just an iPad. It's just too informal and people are generally looking at screens all day. They don't want to look at it again on an iPad. They can easily just turn on your website. Um, so your website obviously is critical. Having a mobile friendly website is generally how people view your website. I think it's image seven, optimization. Yes, yes, search engine optimization. And also um, I think it's 70, statistically 75% of uh, website views are on mobile. So make sure that it's really, really strong on mobile devices. That's absolutely key. Make sure your website looks amazing on there. Um, bring an iPad as a backup, but bring your 11 by 14 portfolio um, but most importantly, James, is, is get in the door, make the phone calls, set up the appointments and meet as much as you possibly can. The more FaceTime, the better. And this is something I've been, you know, coaching Eric on for, for a long time now, but I'm always encouraging Eric to get in the face of the decision makers. Yeah. Um, but I know, Eric, it can be tough. You know, you get <laughs> busy, you're on shoots. It's hard to, you know, make time for it. But it's something that I'm always, you know, working with Eric on is to, okay, let's get in there. Let's, you're in Chicago. Let's go meet with Abelson Taylor, one of the biggest ad agencies and pharmaceutical ad agency, you know, um, brands. Um, and, uh, you know, let's go meet with uh, um, Arc Worldwide, some of the other big agencies in Chicago. That's going to be key. So, um, so Eric, of all the workshops you've attended, you attended like nine and one-on-ones, was there any moment, was there any certain experience or moment that you thought was like, wow, this is the best, you know, the best photo shoot that I've ever done? Best photo shoot I've ever done from the workshops probably would be the the one on one we did in Chicago where we did pharmacy slice of life and we had you know um, I don't know how many models in, in in Lincoln Park at the at the North Pond there um, but you know we and we had we had like middle aged models we had young models we had kids it was this whole thing. And we just kind of found this spot in the city. It's like oasis in the city and um, took amazing images there that don't look like they're in a city at all. Uh, and that's what a brunt of my portfolio right now is mostly that, that project, that shoot. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. That one-on-one, -on -one, which we do offer. We do offer one-on-one -on -one workshop experiences. If you guys don't want to come in with I recommend a them. Group workshop, Eric's done it, two of them and they were absolutely amazing. Um, they were really spectacular productions. So um, awesome. Um, okay, I'd love to answer another question from uh, this one's coming from Luigi. Um, and I believe you're a, you're, um, uh, you asked, I'm new in San Diego. Um, how do you promote yourself in time like this? Or if you can live in another country like Canada? You know, the good thing about a time like this is that we're all on Zoom. So it doesn't matter where you live. You can be in Canada, you can be in Antarctica, it doesn't matter as long as you have an internet connection. Um, you can set up appointments and get on Zoom and talk to people. Um, LinkedIn is key. Make sure LinkedIn is absolutely tight so that they can perceive you as added as high in value. Um, I can't tell you how critical that is. Make sure all your social media pages are tight and they all align with your brand so that throughout your, um, you know, your photographic, um, you know, brand, it also includes not just your um, portfolio, but it includes, you know, how you're perceived on LinkedIn right? That's absolutely um, important. So, um, so anyway, so if you go to, for instance, like, you know, my LinkedIn, I've got like 20,000 20, um, contacts. 
and I've got um, like, uh, I think over 10,000 actual connections. 1,300 people have just viewed my profile. Um, this, is, this is a you know, strong um, LinkedIn profile. So I'd recommend this as strong. If you, you know, you're in San Diego, maybe you wanna be perceived as like more of an LA, New York photographer. Um, I mean, for many years, I actually just did that. I, even when I was 22 years old, I moved to San Francisco. I didn't wanna be perceived as a San Francisco photographer because it's not a major market. So what I did was I got a Google voice number for LA and another one, like a magic deck number for New York. So I had an LA, New York and San Francisco number. So when I marketed myself, I was an LA, New York, San Francisco photographer. So you could do the same LA, New York, San Diego, something like that. Right. And you could just have those numbers patched into um, your, your main cell phone. Right. So, um, so this is, this is an example of what I like you see with, with the, um, experience is really strong. I've got the projects on here. We've got some postings. I have bodies of work of stuff that we've done. You know, I've got my, my video production reel. If you want to, you know, see, oh, you know, you know, cause I also film commercials, um, fashion commercials, beauty commercials, uh, et cetera. And I, you know, film with celebrities. There will be good times and epic adrenaline filled challenges where it seems there's no way you can make it, but Find a way. And Eric probably recognized some of that content because some of that was actually shot at the workshops of Eric. Mm -hmm. yep. And we're using this as our full scale production reel because we're shooting an 8K red cinema camera, shooting the most epic video content. And it goes right alongside of the stuff with celebrities, uh, my TV show stuff that we've done from Great Escapes. And, um, and it's pretty incredible. So, um, but having um, a body of work, you know what, um, Luigi, like no matter where you are, right now in this day and age, try to set up appointments on Zoom with clients, make sure that they are meeting you face to face, because just, you know, messaging them, emailing them doesn't really get you anywhere. You need to set up an appointment to talk to them. And on Zoom, it's wonderful, because no matter where you live, whether you're in, you know, you're in San Diego, they're in New York, or whatever, you can set up an appointment and talk on Zoom, and people are comfortable with that now. Because of COVID, this is actually a wonderful time, because now, not only has it gutted some of the top people in the industry, so it, gives it, open, it leaves it open for everybody else, but it also, everyone's at home, they're more accessible, because if you can personally connect with them, rather than going through their gatekeepers at work, at their office, you can personally connect with them, say via LinkedIn or social, and then set up a Zoom meeting so you can talk to them personally, get to know them and build that, that rapport. So that when the jobs start opening up again, which some already are, um, you're gonna be the first one in the door, right? So anyway, so if you go to my LinkedIn page, that's actually what comes up. If you click on that link, it goes to my, my um, video production reel, right? So that way um, it's super strong, um, you know, uh, a profile. So I'd recommend making sure your profile on LinkedIn is super strong as well. That's absolutely key. Um, and if you want guidance on that, obviously go ahead and, um, you know, set up an appointment to talk to one of our team members in the chat right there. Um, all right. So without further ado, I want to bring on some of our amazing photographic consultants. So, um, oh, and also uh, Brad Derry, who, um, Brad, I'd love for you, uh, before I get to my photographic consultants, Brad actually attended the Newport Beach Workshop. And Brad was um, created mind-bending content there. So Brad, I don't know if uh, I know you're set, you have your video off and you're muted. There he is. Um, Brad, your work was incredible. I got to sit with you during the workshop and review the content each day. We, um, you know, after the, the, the prior shoot day, because we had four days, you were with me. Um, talk to me a little bit about like maybe what you gained, what kind of knowledge you learned at that Newport Beach workshop and kind of how that affected your photography and video. Yeah, no, it was a wonderful experience for me because uh, I'm primarily a videographer, have been for the last 20 years, and I've been wanting to work still photography into my business, but uh, even though I've been a still photographer all my life, not professionally, uh, I really needed a path, you know, to and the experience to, uh, to actually put that uh, concept into my business. So by attending your workshop, I was able to... Uh, you know, get the experience and the know-how uh, to, you know, finally, uh, you know, get that in my, in my own business and, uh, and hopefully start, uh, you know, making a buck at it. <laughs> um, so Brad, talk to me about like, with your, um, the, the content that you created, I mean, you shot just absolutely mind blowing content I mean, I was so impressed and I remember sitting with you and it was some of the strongest work that I saw at the workshop. 
Um, was there any kind of like new method that you kind of took away from as far as like how to coach the models, to art direct the scenes? Uh, did, did anything kind of resonate with you? Well, yeah, well, it was, it was great to have you uh, uh, ju uh, judge my, my, uh, my pictures, uh, y you know, the day after I took them and it gave me a good sense of what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong. Um, like what you mentioned earlier about the depth of field, like I'm always used to shooting with a wide aperture and, uh, you know, I had to learn to raise my ISO and, uh, uh, you know, shoot with a smaller aperture uh, to keep things more in focus. So it's uh, details like that that really matter uh, if you want to learn how to do this type of photography in the right way. Um, you know, the models were all so professional and uh, so easy to work with. Um, they, uh, you know, they, they will actually, you know, do, you know, what, however you direct them and, uh, and they're just so, so professional. It was really a joy to work with all of them. Excellent. Now, was there any specific scene that you were just like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe how incredible, uh, this was. And by the way, while you're talking, mm -hmm. I'm going to showcase some of the pictures that you shot during the workshop, um, in your Dropbox. Now these are unretouched straight out of camera just okay. straight out, this is all lifestyle, kind of like a lifestyle boho fashion. So tell me, what was the scene that you just fell in love with? Yeah, I, I loved uh, shooting with the, the Volkswagen bus, you know, it was one of my favorites. Uh, we had two days actually with two different uh, VW buses. And uh, it was fun to have that uh, very Southern California vibe uh, with the VW bus. One of them had a uh, uh, surfboard on the top and uh, to have the girls, you know, interact with, with the bus and the, the California lifestyle, it really just uh, fit the scene perfectly. Excellent. And you even had these professional skateboarders doing all these like... Yeah, know, he was amazing. Boy, he got some... Look at the air that he Yeah, got. look at the air there. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty incredible. And this is all unretouched, straight out of camera, just getting, getting some sick... I mean, look at that. That's some yeah. sick air. Like, that's, that's all in camera. That's amazing. And then shooting the boxing scene. Honestly, Brad, this was my favorite scene. This is the one that I had art directed to put together. The boxing in boxer brief scene with these girls uh, was just, I mean, the animation, the energy. I mean, it just, the realness to it was really what caught my interest in intrigue. Yeah, and, and like what you said, the, the whole secret to getting that right was casting the right two models to interact with each other. And uh, you so did that with these two gals because, you know, they're the same age and uh, they just had a blast. I mean, I think they probably would have gone on for another couple hours if you would have let them. I mean, they, they had so much fun doing it. And that energy shows through. It shows through in the photographs, you know, that they're having a good time. So, uh, yeah, that, that really worked. It really worked. They even left like welts on each other. It was really awesome. Like, they actually <laughs> were boxing. It was really fun. But they had the time of their lives. And these girls both do fashion and lifestyle. So these were top fashion girls that also do lifestyle and they were incredible. And we had models from Victoria's Secret, from Vogue, from Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, L, the Bulaba campaign, um, and, uh, and a guest model. Um, so it was really incredible. And, and I think we shot with like 13 or 14 different models throughout the week. So it was really amazing. Um, I mean, look at this content. This to me, Brad, is just, I haven't even done my por your portfolio review yet with you. Um, but we're going to set up our photographic consult for next week. But this stuff is just mind blowing. Images like this, this is, this is the front of the portfolio, in my opinion. This should be printed on your 11 by 14 brushed metal portfolio. This will book you ad campaigns. Okay. Right. This, is the, this is the kind of thing that's going to book you the six figure ad campaigns. So it's absolutely stunning. The styling, the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe. I mean, I was, I was just in awe of it. And I know, you know, some photographers have been like, oh, it's COVID. Are you guys still doing workshops? You're darn right we are. We're not canceling any of them. We have workshops. This one went flawlessly. Um, everybody was healthy. We, were, we took some precautions, but not a single person had, you know, had any symptoms or anything. Um, and it's been over you know, almost a month since then. Everything went flawlessly and everything's gonna go flawlessly going forward in Chicago and also New York, then Napa Valley, then LA, then Miami. So um, it's, it was incredible. So anyway, I am really, really impressed at this work, Brad. And I know I got to see, you know, day, day two and day three. I think that was the first time I got to see the, um, the day uh, um, four stuff. So, um, but yeah, this, I love these two gals together, uh, Hannah and, uh, and Lane. Uh, they just Lane, yeah. Too. Yeah, she's the top, top tier girls. And um, I mean, it's just stunning. The wardrobe here, the lighting, 
This is all shot with giant reflect, uh, bounces and um, scrims. So we got to shoot like an eight by eight foot scrim. So that's why the light is all balanced and, um, and then giant bounces. So this was, this was incredible. So Brad, um, also uh, your hard drive should have arrived. So um, I, I mailed it out or should arrive by today at least if you haven't received it yet. And um, so with, I have all that high end, we shot with 8K red cinema cameras. We shot with really high end video content. And um, I can't wait to see the final selects that you came up with. Um, I just mailed you your you know, 10 terabyte hard drive to you. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, what we do with that. And we're doing it at every single workshop, not only video, but also photographic. Okay. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty incredible. So um, but the work is just amazing. And I, I really appreciate it. And thanks for uploading all this great content to show you straight out of camera, unedited, unretouched, just like this is, this is spectacular. So anyway, I'm, I'm super proud of you. Well, thank you, um, Kevin. Thank you. That goes along. Uh, absolutely, Brad. I, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. And that was your first workshop. So I can't wait going forward um, what's, uh, what you're going to do. Um, so, all right. Well, Brad, uh, thank you so much. And I guess the next one, I, I'd love to bring um, <clears throat> uh, Dan and Chelsea and, uh, and um, Sean on uh, to talk. Um, so if you guys um, would, oh, there's Sean. There's a great, great Sean Ashanti. So, um, so Sean, um, Sean is, uh, works on our team. He's one of our photographic and director consultants. Um, he is uh, located in, um, he's in New York, he's in Brooklyn. So, um, hey, Sean in, in New York. So, um, Sean, I know you have some experience in the video production world um, and also in photography. And I know you're, you know, you're one of my, um, my top photographic consultants. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, um, I guess, you know, what you notice the most with um, our photographers as far as what they need, what they need to achieve to kind of meet their goals. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, great. So basically what most photographers seem to need, at least when I speak to them at first, is, uh, and this is going to sound, this might sound a little bit blanket, but it's really about having utter confidence that you are going to get to where you need to go. A lot of photographers have their, their confidence is actually holding them back. They're here and they never ever try to make, take the opportunity or just take the risk to get here. And, you know, if you never really try to test, if you, if you always think if you, you go for it, you're going to fail, you're never going to get there. What, what's, what's going to be the difference between now and like say next year, if you don't invest in yourself, if you don't, go out there and take some amazing photos. You know, you're gonna have to invest in yourself. That's business, that's life. But you're gonna have to do that in order to really make a difference in your career. The other thing would all be about, um, you know, your portfolio. And when I say portfolio, I mean, even with the images that you have, is really just getting your branding on point. Getting your branding on point so that when you talk to those big decision makers that are, that, that are booking those huge campaigns, that, hey, you know, this is what I do. I do lifestyle. I do fashion and this is directed at what you want to do and what they're looking for. Cause if they're looking at, you know, pictures of you at home with your dog, that's great. I mean, it's cute, but you know, we're talking about business, commercial photography, commercial fashion, commercial lifestyle. We really want to hone in on your best images because of which I think it was already said, you're only as strong as your weakest image. So, that's, that's, that's my advice, Kevin. I love it, Sean. I love it. And I know you've been able to consult with a lot of photographers and really kind of help their dreams come true. Um, you know, what do you think, I think, um, going forward, should photographers really focus on as far as, you know, where they should kind of invest their, um, you know, what they have? Because, you know, right now everybody's, you know, a little timid about where they're going to put their money. Should I, you know, should I, should I sit and should I wait? Should I wait to see what pans out? Should I, uh, should I invest in my portfolio? Should I invest in equipment? What, what, what are your suggestions, Sean? Listen, listen, hands down. And, you know, I'm going to I'm going to tell this from two perspectives. Like Kevin said that I'm a director, I'm an award winning filmmaker. And I've talked to filmmakers that, you know, have like, like they made films that are like 250,000, 500,000, $1 million films. And I'm like, okay, cool. Where can I see it? And they don't put it anywhere where they can see it. There's no place where I can see it. But the thing is, what, what it just boils down to is that, if you're a creative, if you're, if you're somebody that does photos, you're a person that does videos, then you need to invest, not only invest and shoot and make some amazing images, you gotta put it out there so people can see it. So your portfolio is the number one thing. It's literally the number one thing. 
in the case of these filmmakers, I was like, listen, you got to get those things to theater. I don't care what you got to do. You got to talk to people and get it out there. Your portfolio, one thing that's good for photographers, it's it's a little easier, right? Uh, you, you don't, you don't got to talk to a big theater owner or anything like that. Get it on your website. Get your shoot an epic portfolio, you know, however you need to do it and put it on your website. That way people can go there and they, will, they won't only look at your website and say, wow, you're an amazing photographer, but they'll say, you are an amazing photographer and you're probably going to cost me money, but you know what? I'm going to save up and I'm going to plan for it. And it's all about planning. Everything's planning. So plan to take some amazing photos, do things right. Like seriously, you know, don't wait, get that portfolio now because People, people are working. A lot of guys I'm talking to, you know, they're, they are getting jobs. They're working right now. Uh, and, you know, you, sh you should be too. That's, that's all I have to say. I love it. I think, thanks, Sean. And I know a lot of people are. I mean, you're in New York. You're kind of in the, the heart of where a lot of the pandemic thing was going on. But people are starting to open up. Things are starting to, to happen. And all these, and just so you guys know, none of the quarantines or any of this stuff is affecting our workshops whatsoever. Um, we, uh, we're making one small adjustment to our New York workshop due to the um, New York mayor's um, uh, new policies on quarantine. Um, we're going to be doing it um, instead of uh, two days in Long Island and two days in Brooklyn, we're going to be doing all four days in Long Island to completely avoid any issue quarantine whatsoever. So, uh, so that way we're not having a single problem. Um, and all the best locations are going to be in Long Island anyway. So I'm, um, I, it's going to be absolutely epic in New York and everything is going um, forward um, as planned. And it's going to be absolutely spectacular. Um, all right. So um, I'd love to uh, talk with um, the great Chelsea Frank. Now, Chelsea, um, I, you are not only an amazing photographic consultant, but you're also a fashion guru. Um, you uh, are a fashion stylist. You also did a ton of fashion styling during uh, the Newport Beach workshop, which was incredible. It was some of the best styling you've ever seen at um, our photographic workshops in Newport. I was so impressed. Um, and I know you get to work with um, a lot of great photographers. You're, you're in the DC area. Uh, you're originally from New York. Um, so Chelsea, um, talk to us about, I guess like, you know, I know you hear a lot of concerns and things that photographers have and, um, and you guide photographers. Is there any kind of words of advice that you'd, you know, you want to give to photographers? Um, in, in yeah. Fashion? Uh, as far as fashion, you know what, like, you know, we, we put on this 60,000 plus uh, K production uh, per day. And, you know, we have everything that you need. Um, if there's any concerns or worries, you know, we're, we're there for you. Um, as far as fashion, we're, we're pretty well set. Um, we have kind of like a six month plan that uh, we've done uh, as far as Miami, New York, uh, Chicago, uh, Denver and and we're working towards that. So if there's any concerns, you know, you you come to us, you know, me, Ivan, or Kevin, or Sean, or Dan, and and you ask us any questions that you want, and and we'll be there to answer that for you. And you know, we're we're excited to work with you. We're you know we're excited to do business with you, um, and we're excited to have your portfolio developed in such a manner that, you know, we, like, like Kevin said, as far as that, that circus shoot and the parachutes and everything, you know, that was developed by, uh, you know, uh, by the photographers that are attending the workshops. So they created those ideas. So we love to storyboard with you. We love to hear your creative perspectives. So <clears throat> as, as far as that, that matter, we, love to have your artistic perspective. And yeah, I love that. Chelsea, I, let me ask you something. You mentioned something about the fashion for the next six months. I want to be clear about that. What Chelsea's talking about is specifically fashion styling. We're, we're doing the fashion design and styling and concepts over the next six months. In fact, Chelsea's been spearheading this and we've actually are collaborating with big time tap fashion designers, some of them from other countries uh, that are actually custom designing uh, the apparel we're shooting for the workshop. So it's not just off the rack apparel that we're pulling and uh, buying and returning, but Chelsea is actually coordinated with all these top fashion designers that are custom making specific products. Like for instance, the upcoming vintage story. Can you talk a little bit about that? What we're shooting with um, some of our custom made uh, pieces uh, for the vintage Mad Men story and fashion this coming month or this month? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're working with this designer. She's actually uh, normally based in uh, San Francisco, 
but currently she's in Thailand and she's custom making. Uh, Kevin and I, we went through different materials and um, color, color schemes as well. And so she's custom designing everything for Mad Men. We're, for the lifestyle day, we're going through free people. Um, so she's gonna, so we're, we're going through lifestyle and we're going through vintage uh, Mad Men. We're getting vintage accessories. Um, I just talked with some people from the Netherlands, uh, so they're they're willing to send us their um, their their items as well, and just it, it's like going to be a very massive and epic scale production. Uh, for New York, we're getting flowy dresses custom made. Uh, Kevin and I have to um, we're so she's already making the the custom dresses for that. They're going to be very very long flowy dresses but this is yeah what kevin's showing right now is the the vintage designer for chicago and also uh we're having custom made men's suits we're having um high-end vintage um all the the accessories i mean it's over the top in addition to having a 1960 shelby cobra convertible prop as well as a 1957 parisienne so i'm really stoked about this and chelsea is an expert not only in photography but also on the fashion styling side which is so critical and I, that's why I'm so impressed. So Chelsea, could you tell us a bit about like, okay, so you're talking to photographers all the time. One thing I noticed, Chelsea, is that a lot of photographers really struggle with like, they might have some great photography, but in their photography, maybe the styling isn't very strong. Have you noticed a lot of that? Um, absolutely. You know, it's, and you know what, it's like the, the lighting, the, the environment, the, you know, the location is critical. Uh, the models are definitely, definitely critical, and and especially having someone like Hannah, um, as you know, you know some of the people on board uh, at the Newport Beach workshop. Uh, she just has this energy. She's just so much fun, and and she's gorgeous. And but you know the if without you know a model in a proper uh, outfit with the proper accessories, with the proper hat, with the proper uh, jewelry, with the proper outfit and the proper shoes, it it just doesn't work out so without that you know without everything with without you know rico doing the hair and and the the makeup artist and, and everything going together in a proper manner you don't have a solid it, like you were saying you know in the last day you know it it takes um you know a lot of people to to bring this into a solidified production. It's it's not just the model. It's not just the photographers. It's not just the scrims. It's literally like even just the people, you know, lifting the the equipment that that could, you know, it, it's everything that that comes together in all, all in one. Absolutely. In fact, you were mentioning some flowy dresses. This is like some of the concept stuff we're talking about specifically. Yeah. So we're thinking about doing some of these flowy dresses um, on uh, one of the shoot days in New York, as well as the Elite Masterclass, doing something completely over the top and epic, um, doing something with, you know, propping and just insane, flowy, crazy, like actually th this specifically is kind of the kind of dress we're talking about. Um, yeah, and, he, and he's going to be custom making that as well. So exactly. So it'll be custom to whatever fabric we want and everything. So, I mean, it's over the top. And fashion is a passion of mine. So I want to make sure that the fashion is in, it's just so over the top and in line. Fashion's gotta be critical, it's gotta be on point, it's gotta be the right size, it has to be tailored properly. Um, you know, if you can get custom made and have them tailor it to your models, that's ideal. If you don't have it tailor made and it's, um, you, you basically get what they call, um, it's, you know, from the showroom, they have um, essentially, they're kind of like, the standard size in the showroom, which is going to fit like a size zero or size two model. Um, and then what you do is you pin the, the styling, you, you pin the, um, um, the dresses in the back. So a lot of times, you know, these models, they look amazing from the front and the back, the entire back is completely clamped and pinned down um, to make sure that it fits properly. Um, and there's a lot of other things to like make sure these dresses and all these, these over the top stuff kind of comes into fruition, but we're, we're experts at that. That's all we've ever done. Um, so excellent. Thank you, Chelsea. I really appreciate it. Um, you're incredible to work with. Uh, and also I'd love uh, the great Dan Rothschild to jump on. I'd love to hear, um, uh, hear from you, um, Dan. Uh, there he is. There's a great, great Dan Rothschild. So Dan um, is, uh, he, he's one of the, the newer additions to our team and Dan has been an absolute superstar. You have worked with more photographers in the last month than I think anyone has 
um, in history with our with the photography workshop series. Um, and you've been able to give them the opportunity uh, to really uh, to, to create their make their dreams come to reality. And that's what I'm really excited about, Dan. So, um, you know, I, I know you you've worked with a lot of these photographers that we've actually had on today. Um, and, uh, you know, from Maureen to, um, uh, you know, to, to Brad, et cetera. So, um, so Dan, um, first of all, I'd love for you to, you know, introduce yourself and then talk a little bit about kind of what you see is kind of one of the biggest needs for photographers right now in fashion photography. Okay. Well, great. First of all, Kevin, thanks for having me on and, and hello to everybody and, uh, virtual hugs and all that in this, uh, strange time. But, uh, you know, um, just a little background is I have my whole life career has been helping people, uh, their careers and companies improve and in many different industries. And I, I guess I, I have kind of a, a knack to be able to perceive and connect with people to know their particular individual being and thus by doing so be able to guide them and help them accomplish their goals that maybe they might have a little struggle getting around themselves we all we all have that uh, you know where we're not necessarily as objective about ourselves so um, that's how I uh, work with people and I love it and um, you know, after you know, following you for a long time and watching everything you do, and and here's here's the thing: we're all here today for the same reason, and we're all uh, similar, and that is we want to improve in in our ourselves, our work, our photography, our life, and that's what why I am on board and I love working with you, Kevin. Is you are sincere, you're real, you're down to earth, and you give everything and all your knowledge and experience because you love helping people. And I'm right there with you loving doing that. So that's, that's what we do, all of us here um, uh, do as a team, is we help photographers get beyond themselves to become to the next level and greater at photography, understanding it, um, how to be more successful in their business because unless you're already set financially for life, you know, and you're doing photography because you love it and it's a hobby and it's just, you know, fun. Uh, normally we're here to, you know, be able to put the food on the table and also have a, a great life and all that. So uh, what, it, what it takes photography, understanding is you have to be open to learning, improving, accepting, uh, experience that you might not yet have like you know from Kevin and team and all um, and to realize that the real selling point of you as a photographer is that's been mentioned by everyone here is your portfolio done deal that's what you present uh, to be able to go meet with someone once you meet with them then you're involved too in that uh, selling yourself or presenting yourself for them to want to hire you. So you have to have the portfolio that's going to be above and beyond, you know, the other many, many, many photographers that are approaching that same uh, company, um, you know, agent, person, and to grab, uh, grab their attention momentarily you know, I, it's the old cliche the elevator's speech you have a short amount of time to grab the attention of uh, important people from you know just clients businesses when they're looking to hire you know a photographer to do their uh, their ads and all uh, you know you have to grab their attention and that's what it's all about so the you know, everything from the workshops, the working with Kevin, the app. And here's the other thing that um, what uh, we we can help you as much as you want and allow. For instance, after you do a workshop and you build these this, you know, these great photos and this uh, you're putting together the um, you know, your portfolio, we take time. Uh, we'll do a two hour Zoom, whatever it takes, uh, Kevin, myself. Um, all of us, uh, you know, to sit down with you and go through and make sure that your 
choosing the right pictures for your portfolio. And then after that, um, you know, if you want help on being connected with people and how to and how to develop your business more, we're here for as much as you want and will allow us to. Now, sometimes people will come and they'll take great photos and then they'll go off and they'll do what they want in their own thing. It's up to you, but we're here for the full road of total success as far and high as you want to go. And um, Kevin has the, the great um, talent, proven talent, um, and to find a mentor like that in life, um, in, in, in this particular industry, but in, in life as well, it's a rarity. So it's not a coincidence you found you know, uh, Kevin and, and the work he does and the team and all, it's not a coincidence. You're here for a reason. And sometimes it takes our subconscious to kick up the info to our upfront brain and we go, oh, oh, I get it now. <laughs> so I'll make it short and sweet, but that's, you know, um, get on board. I'll be blunt do a workshop because you know people will go gosh i haven't done one oh they cost money oh okay well in life if you look at when you had a situation where you had to make a decision to improve and to make a change and you struggled with the doubt and the fear and the everything and then you went in and you did it and you had a great success doing that it's the same thing it's the same thing so there we go that's it and Excellent. Thank you, Dan. That was incredible. I'm really... here to help and work with anyone. And um, I would love it because uh, I, I'm really good with people. and I love uh, helping people and have a, a long history of being able to uh, a great success in uh, improving people's lives and careers. You do. you do. You certainly do as a track record so far of the photography workshop series. So I'm, I'm proud of you, Dan. You're incredible. Thanks. Um, Kevin. And well, thanks for having me on board today. Great to meet you all <laughs> and see you all. <laughs> 100%. All right, guys. Um, so this has been a little bit of a longer webinar than we normally do, but I had so many people on today. I think we had like, I don't know, like eight panelists or something. I don't think we've ever had that many, but I just wanted you guys to meet everybody and also hear from different perspectives because I think that's always great. Instead of just hearing from me, I want you to hear from other people. I'm always growing. I'm always trying to transform and become better at my craft and photography. And, you know, even though I'm a TV director, executive producer of a TV show that's on NBC, I always want to be better at that. I want to be better at filming commercials. I want to be better at photography. I want to be better at fashion, lifestyle, swim, everything. Now, um, before we run, I just want to answer a couple last questions. Um, Bear Gutierrez um, asks, uh, can you recommend a way to find a top stylist in Denver, Colorado? Um, a great way to do that, Bear, is uh, first to ask top photographers that have worked with great stylists in, in Colorado. I have, um, I have some that, that I recommend that, I, that are credible. Um, I actually had a Denver stylist that I liked so much, I flew her into LA to, do, to style a shoot in LA for me um, because she was so amazing. Um, we could get in touch with, uh, I'd love to get in touch with you about that and we could discuss that further. Um, also, um, just in general, if you guys uh, want to take a look, there's a, there's a website called productionparadise.com. Um, Production Paradise is a great way to find stylists and production crew all over the world, really. And um, Production Paradise and Production Hub, uh, those are, um, are great, great places to, to find people. So um, I, I love this. You should also have your listing on here as a photographer as well. Um, but uh, Production Paradise and Production hub.com uh, to find production crew, um, stylists, and production staff, um, et cetera. Um, so, um, and also I have a, a whole teams of incredible staff in every city, major city in America from, you know, uh, uh, multiple cities from LA, Newport Beach, San Diego, Napa Valley, San, um, San Francisco, as well as Chicago, Dallas, um, Denver, um, Boston, New York, uh, Miami, DC, Atlanta, Dallas, et cetera. So uh, I have them all over America and, and also teams in um, Milan, Paris, London, Istanbul. So if you guys need any help with that, that's something that I'm, I have teams all over the world, not, not fashion, hair, makeup, styling, uh, camera operators, et cetera. Um, okay. So um, uh, any last questions um, to answer? And if you guys, if we don't get your question, um, we will uh, talk with you after the fact, if you want to set up a, um, a consult. Um, with us. So um, I uh, also, um, uh, let's see if Linda is still on. I had um, a Linda Jett 
Um, you, you mentioned you're concerned about traveling due, due to the pandemic. Can um, uh, I uh, post a workshop um, uh, coming up in 2021? I'm a fine art photographer this time and have MFA in photography. So um, that's amazing, Linda. You have an MFA in photography. Congrats to you. I mean, that's incredible. It's a lot of work to do that. I, I went through that process at the Academy of Art San Francisco. Um, so you're a highly educated um, you know, photographic image maker that really truly understands the theor theoretical aspects of image making. So for you, you know, you are a, a very sophisticated photographer. I love that, Linda. Um, I would say um, if you are concerned about the pandemic, I mean, I don't know wh where you're located, but um, we have workshops all over the country and we will have workshops um, likely in your area. Uh, so you let us know, um, and we will have we have our whole schedule for 2021 rolled out. We have already we're already booking up most of our workshops are almost sold out for 2021. So if you are do want to attend one, I would recommend getting involved now because not only um, we need to save your spot, but we can also offer you a $500 discount um, for being a webinar attendee, as well as you'll save another 500 for enrolling at 2020 prices for any 2021 workshop. So you're gonna essentially save $1,000 off of any 2021 workshop, off of a four day workshop. So um, I would highly, highly recommend that, um, Linda. So I would love for you, Linda, to set up an appointment with um, one of the people on our team, if you haven't already, and, um, and we can talk with you further um, about that. I think that would be fantastic for you, Linda. Um, and about traveling, because uh, yeah, there are certain restrictions on certain cities and states and things like that, and we're doing everything we can to stay in line with that. Um, but still have our epic experiences um, go forward because it's really important that you continue to do photography even during this time. You can't just sit in your house. You've got to go and do stuff. Otherwise, you're going to be left behind in 2021. That's for sure. Um, okay. Uh, I have another question from Robert Patrick Winston. He says, um, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, from uh, uh, Sheridan Poyer. Um, uh, as a 40 year old photographer, how would uh, you tweak your, um, how, how to tweak your advice for a 40 year old photographer? Uh, there's no tweaking of the advice. Um, I mean, I'm 36 years old and this would apply to a 40 year old photographer to apply to a 65 year old photographer to apply to a 25 photographer, 25 year old photographer, doesn't matter, male or female, all this advice is right in line, um, with no matter what age you are, no matter what, um, you know, gender or um, ethnicity, it's all going to, uh, you know, align with that. So um, Sheridan, hopefully that answers your question. Um, but uh, you got to, you know, really um, incorporate everything we're discussing. And I would highly recommend you get involved in like our Chicago and New York workshop coming up, Sheridan. Um, I think it'd be a really, really great fit for you. Um, okay, so um, uh, we have um, uh, Ricardo um, Tombach, um, and Ivan had mentioned um, uh, to uh, you wanted to answer this question live. Now, Ricardo, hopefully you're still on. Um, yeah, you are. So Ricardo, um, you ask, I'm a retired crime scene investigator, uh, also specializing in forensic photography. Is it too late to look into fashion photography? Absolutely not too late, man. Um, I mean, the beauty is, is today, especially with COVID, it's gutting the big fashion photographers and the big industry advertising photographers. So what that means is that a lot of the ad agencies, the creative directors and art buyers have been laid off. A lot of fashion brands have shed a lot of people because it's hit the retail industry really hard. So what that means is it's good for us because if you're not already dialed in with those people, it means that there's gonna be opportunity. It means that there, because when people get fired and new people come on, they need to find and hire new photographers. So it's your opportunity, Ricardo, for that. And I think that we have tons of people. In fact, we've had many, many, many photographers that actually come from things like crime scene investigation, um, uh, people in security industry, people in uh, military and stuff, uh, and they retire from that field and then they come into the workshop series to basically catapult their photography to the next level. Because a lot of times, you know, they want to have that second career in photography, but they don't want to go back to school and do a whole bachelor's and my MFA and things like Linda and me. They don't want to go through that process and spend a couple hundred thousand dollars more. This is the best way um, to maximize yourself going forward. And I can tell you what, the reason I designed the workshop series 11 years ago was specifically for this reason. I want to give you a, um, a, a, the most epic four-day experience that you're going to create more content in a four-day uh, workshop. You're going to get more value, more, you're going to gain more in a four-day workshop than you would at any four-year photographic university guaranteed absolutely guaranteed. And I know this because I did my bachelor's in photography and an MFA in photography, and it even come close to preparing me for the industry. But that's why our workshops are designed for you to walk away with a 40 image cohesive body of work 
that is worthy of getting published in Vogue. And no one else can say that. Nobody else in the world can say that about their photographic workshops. So that's why we're proud of what we do. That's why we stand by it. That's why our workshops are the most elite in the world, hands down. And it's something that I highly, highly recommend you guys get involved um, because this is, uh, this is something that um, is, is going to be really, really spectacular for you and for your photographic career going forward. Um, so I am, I'm very, very excited, guys. And I can't wait to see each and every one of you going forward in, some, um, in a photographic workshop. And I hope that our photographic consultants can help you. So thank you so much for attending this. Uh, I think this is our record. This is like we've been on for like two and a half hours. But I, um, I, I just had a lot to say about fashion photography, the secrets of fashion photography. Hopefully you guys learned. And also, if you guys are interested in, or if I didn't get to answer your questions, um, please make more comments and, and also set up a consult so we can go over your questions in detail personally with each and every one of you. I'll talk to you guys soon. And I can't wait to see you create the greatest images you've ever shot in your lifetime and to catapult your career going forward through 2021 into, 20, um, into 2021 and for the next five to 10 years going forward because we're here to maximize your potential and make you the top photographer you can be. Take care, guys.